Welcome in to coverage of the Arca Menard Series from Daytona International Speedway. It is the season opener, and what a beautiful sight that is. The racetrack weather is good, and we're excited to get the Suchi Fast Track 200 underway at an iconic racetrack. Welcome in to the Race Day Studio. Caitlin Vinci alongside Trevor Bain, Todd Bodine. Once again, great to see you, you two. Uh, we've been together all night, yeah, and we have. we have an exciting Arca race. It got moved to tonight from what was supposed to be tomorrow's race. This is interesting for the drivers, a little bit nerve-wracking. Yeah, there's some guys that get double duty. We didn't know we were going to have double duty, no. too. We came for a truck race, we get an yes. Arca race. What a, <laughs> what a great night, but after watching that truck race, these Arca drivers have been sitting there on pit road, watching everything that's happening, and I've got to imagine after watching that race, their nerves yes. are even higher than they were this morning when they woke up. Absolutely. Absolutely, and you know, they, they plan on running this race tomorrow afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. And now here they are under the lights. What's yes. better than being under the lights at Daytona? Nothing. That's better. a great it is point. It's so cool to be out on that track doing that. So there's a number of big names in the race this evening. Who are you watching? Who you got an eye on? Yeah, we have a couple double duty people. Uh, Tony Bridinger and we had um, one of the Gray brothers. We Tanner. had Tanner Gray out there. Uh, his brother went for a ride in the truck series, went upside down, but he's in this race tonight. We have Andres Perez that finished second in the points last year. And one of the guys on this list, Justin Bonsignor, I raced with him when I was seven years old wow. in go-karts. He's Good. gone on to be right. a three time NASCAR wheel and modified tour champion finished second in their season opener at New Smyrna a couple nights ago, but he's making his ARCA debut. The guy on that list I'm looking at, Shane Van Ginsberger. Yep. This race is so important for him. Every lap he can make in a circle is more experience he gains. SVG, so fun to watch. It'll be really cool to see how he fares in at the ARCA race tonight. We're excited for it, and every team and driver wants to win out in Daytona. So business really picking up there on the grid as these drivers and teams get set for an exciting one in Florida racing after this. It's been a long off season, but today is the day. The 2024 Arca Menard Series is back on the main stage, Daytona. Which new faces will make a name for themselves? and which drivers will score their first career win. Yeah! The field is ready. Green flag, green flag. Are you? Yeah, the Arca Menard Series at Daytona starts now. Welcome to Daytona International Speedway, the world center of racing. Tonight, it's the Suchi Fast Track 200. It's a late night, but we are ready. It's time for the second race of the evening. We're so happy that you're joining us. We've got a stacked field. There they are lined up and ready to go racing for 80 laps. We've got Shane Van Gisbergen, Tony Breidinger, Marco Andretti, you name it. I think they're in the field tonight, and we're so happy that you're here. Joining us tonight, I'm Jamie Little, back for yet another season along with Phil Parsons and this guy, the 2022 Daytona 500 champion, Austin Sindrick. Good to see you. Good evening. Yes, you know, we, something we always talk about in the Arkham and Art series, it's all about opportunity. I mean, for the young guys, for the older generation, we've got it all. We've been using this Arkham Menard series as a developmental series for NASCAR for over 50 years. My brother, when he started his career, was an Arca champion before becoming a NASCAR champion. And right now, we saw what Jesse Love was able to do last year. He came here. He finally turned 18. He can run the entire series. He won 10 of our 20 races last year. And that propelled him into a full-time ride with Richard Trillis Racing in the Xfinity Series. There's all sorts of drivers here trying to do the same thing. The guy I have my eye on, the guy that may be the next Jesse Love might be Andres Perez. He wasn't old enough to race here in February of last year, but he ran the rest of the schedule, had some great runs, probably should have won the race in Michigan, had an engine problem, but he's a guy that shows a lot of potential among a lot of other drivers too, but it's also a place that drivers can, can, can finish their careers and have a great time racing at the biggest stage that we have. Yeah, and we talk about those younger drivers. Look, Greg Van Alsten is 40s, gets the win right here in Daytona. What a celebration. We'll talk more about him later on. But, Austin, you're one of many drivers in all three levels of NASCAR who started here in the Arkham Series. How important is this as you grow and develop and want to get up to those upper levels? Yeah, when you read that there's 50 cars entered into this race, 
you, you try and figure out why this race is so important, it's because you can't do this type of racing anywhere else in any other type of car. We have so many different drivers, so many different walks of life, so many different teams, personnel, and where the drivers are challenged, the cars are challenged in ways that you don't see in any other type of motorsports. So uh, I think that's what makes this racing so in demand for, for us to understand, for those drivers to understand what it takes to race at this level. If you want to go race in the Daytona 500, you have to start here in the Arkham Menards series, and, and it really does build drivers like Jesse Love. We saw Nick Sanchez win the truck race. He was just doing this a few years ago, so it's a it's a very important race, and it's a very important starting point for a lot of drivers. To get you ready, and speaking of Shane Van Gisbergen, and now that might be a name you're familiar with, or maybe you're not, but if you remember, in the Cup Series just last summer, this was SVG showing off what he does best racing on a road course first cup race puts it to him guys and he brings home the checkered flag but guess what he has never raced on a super speedway and this is his debut tonight so moments ago our amanda busick caught up with svg Shane Mangesbergen ready to get in his car here as we race under the lights here in Daytona. And it's not uh, a surprise how special this place is. It says the World Center of a Racing up here from Chicago last year to right now. How much of a dream is this for you, Shane? It's been pretty cool. It's been an awesome experience. I've never uh, started a race this late at night, so that's new. But um, I made a mistake in qualifying, missed the draft. So unfortunately, we're pretty far back in the field. But um, yeah, where the tech Chevy looks good. So hopefully I'll just keep learning, do every lap and get closer to the front. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Cheers. He was so close to not making this field. You know, the seven car withdrew and that allowed his time to get in. So we're happy that SVG made it in. But Austin, take a look here. What he has done down under a three time champion, the endless races, but they were all on road course. Yeah, I think the, the script is a bit flipped here. He's a, he's a, definitely not in his normal environment. So it'll be fun to watch him tonight Are for sure. Absolutely. Ready? Let's get go track side. 200 started. Here to give the command to Fire Engines is Seminole Tribe of Florida musician, Nick the Native. Take it away, Nick. Drivers, start your engines! I like that. I think you've been practicing too. <laughs> that is a Friday night command. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well done. Well, the wait is just about over. Stay with us. We're going to drop the green flag on the Arkham Menard series live from Daytona. This is for all the short track racers out there that don't think you can get to this level. I've worked my ass off to get here, and we did it! Yeah! Oh, I just love it. Great Van Alst, that emotion, that energy at 41 years old when he got the win. So he was a surprise winner last year. We had a surprise pole sitter today for the first time winning the General Tire Pole Award. 43-year-old Willie Mullins. What a moment for him. He's been trying, been at this game of racing, and today he was the best. 50 cars qualified for this race. Of course, only 40 made the field. So what a field it was. And let's check in with our pit reporters, starting with Heather DeBow. From the little team that could to the little team that did, Willie Mullins captures his first career pole here in the ARCA series. And Willie, it's been 10 years in the making. Describe the emotions and hard work that went into chasing this dream and this moment that you're in right now. A lot of tears. A lot of tears we did this. and. Uh... You know, we work in a parents' garage. I'm proud. Mom and dad have been behind me. Uh, you know, we lost my father-in-law a couple weeks ago. So this is a very emotional day. And um, I'm proud of Kevin Reed and, and Daryl Faree that have busted their butt to put this car together. And, and, you know, this side note, this is the second time this car has been on the front row. Dale Jarrett did it back in 2006. So it's pretty cool to bring RYR65 uh, back to the front. And we're proud of everything that our Mullins Racing and CorvetteParts.net uh, Ford Fusion has done, or Ford Mustang, I mean. So we're proud of that. And, uh, you know, ABA, uh, Zenith Aviation and Crowing Recycling, they've been behind me for 10 years, and we can't thank them enough. And I got to meet John Menard today. That was cool. And uh, the whole Menards family for supporting this series. And, and without Menards and all the Menards stores across the United States, we wouldn't be here today. Best of luck to you tonight. Thank you very much. 
what a day it has been for that gentleman. Way to go capturing the pole. Our Suchi Fast Track 200 starting grid will be in the pylon, as we just saw. Pole sitter in the number three car and Tim Richmond on the outside. And if you see right behind him in the 25, that's Tony Bridinger. What a day she has had already. Just jumped out of the truck. Had a great run going, but got turned around. Let's see who Tony Breidinger is. Yeah, so impressive last year. Some great top five runs. Only 24 years old. She's the winningest USAC midget driver that we've ever had. Look at this. Over 2 million followers on Instagram and TikTok. I think she has 5 million social followers alone. So let's check in with her. What do you think? Let's do, yeah, let's do that. Hey, Tony, Phil Parsons in the Fox booth. You got a copy? Yep, I got you. We already did a little doing a little double duty now. You have some experience here, but you have to be so excited. Full time for Venturini Motorsports and going to kick it off here at Daytona. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Just ran the truck race. It's all about adrenaline in me. Got a lot of good seat time and laps in. Uh, hoping this is a little bit less chaotic. We can stay up front. Uh, that sounds great, Tony. It's Austin Sindrick here looking uh, Looking to obviously have a great run today. What uh, in, a, in your preparation, what have you looked for to, to try and get a win today? Yeah, I think just working with my teammate, Jake Finch, he's already up here. So I think if we can just maintain where we are and have our teammates join us, we'll be in a good spot. Awesome. Sounds great. Best of luck, Tony. Thank you. Tony Breidinger sounds ready to go. Well, we always talk about diversity in the Arkham and Art Series. How about this right here? Ages 18 to 64, four female drivers, one former winner. But look at this, 22 different states. And right there, Phil, six different countries represented in the cars that showed up to qualify for this race today. Let's take a look at our race analysis. You see this race is 80 laps, 200 miles. We're going to have a race break on or near lap number 40. Our winner last year was Greg Van Alst. This is the 61st time that ARCA has raced here at Daytona. Now to turn four, Willie Mullins will lead them to the green for the first time in his career. Qualified just earlier today. It has been a long day for these drivers, but they are ready to go off season for about four months for these guys and ladies. Pace car is off. The three car on the inside will lead them as the green flag waves in the air. We are racing at Daytona. Finch with a nice push to Willie Mullins as they head into turn one. Tony Breidinger though, not wasting any time on the outside in row number two. Remember last year, that 27 car of Tim Richmond was racing for the lead late in the race and ran out of fuel. And as we look to get the field a little more organized, you know, the Arkham Art Series does group qualifying, and I feel like it really splits up the field in a lot of ways as far as which cars are strong and which aren't, as, as guys are seeing, seeing the jockey for position pretty early. Willie Mullins pulling out in front behind him, the 18-year-old Jake Finch, son of James Finch, longtime car owner in the Arkham and Art Series as well as the Cup Series. And James is back here at the racetrack watching Jake. Jake told me he's going to run some races for his dad here in the ARCA series this year. So he's going to release a half a dozen, yeah. yeah. And Tim Richmond, no relation to the former Jim, uh, Tim Richmond that raced in the Cup Series. What a nice young man. I'm hoping these drivers watch that uh, Truck Series race we had just now and uh, try to keep these cars a little straighter than those trucks were. I'm with you, Phil. I, I see a lot of movement, though, in the field. You look at those roofs, and they're they're moving all over the place. Some guys may be ducking out of the field, ducking out of line. Uh, and some guys might be delivering massive bushes in the middle <laughs> of the back straight away. There's a, there's a lot going on here in the pack. <laughs> Looks like Greg Van Alst making it three wide up on top of the racetrack. You see him right there in the 35, last year's winner. Uh, the 62 car had to get on the brakes. They're really big. That's Steve Lewis Jr. in the 62 car. See, Greg Van Alst is trying to squeeze back down. Looks like he was able to get down. 
I think it's going to take at least seven, eight laps to, to get this field sorted out because I do feel like there's there's some really strong cars that are, are in the back of the field right now that are trying to work their way forward and, and probably some of the opposite, maybe some cars that don't have the raw speed that are that are kind of jammed in there in the center of the field. And that group qualifying will, will bring that on. You may have some of the fastest cars here in practice and they get in the wrong group and do, don't get a good qualifying effort and they start at the back as you see Greg Van Alst leading that third line up towards the front. I mean, that's a that's a great effort. I mean, just to push from from Gustine all the way up to Greg Van Alst really recovered that third lane. Meanwhile, it's it's letting the bottom get away here. So it'll be interesting to see if this third lane stays, or uh, or if it creates some handling issues in the middle of the pack. Because when you got cars three wide side by side, exit of turn four, you're going to have a lot of movement as they really put the squeeze on Tony Bridinger exiting the tri -oval. Greg Van Alst making moves early. Oh, oh trouble already. And we've got Tony Breidinger around the 25, and they're wrecking all over the place. Caution yeah, is out. As well. Yeah, S SVG is in that as well. Shane Van Gisbergen had to run this race to be able to race in the Xfinity race, so this will be interesting to see what the officials say. I think Tanner Gray in the Gibbs number 18 was also in that. Jeff Schofield in the 07 we see there. Big damage to Amber Balkan. Amber Balkan full time this year once again. This is not how she wanted to start her season. I think that's Ed Pompa in the number 10 car for Andy Hillenberg. It was getting really tight through the middle of that trial. I wonder if if there were some cars that just got squeezed. Obviously Tony was was stuck in the middle there. So Sock Chris right there. Here. We know at least three of the Venturini cars were involved in that incident. Venturini has five full-time entries. Let's see exactly what happened. That's the that's the 25 of Tony right in the middle. Let's see if she, she gets squeezed. So I, I think the O2 got a got a push there and wiggled down the racetrack, and then they just kind of squeezed and touched on corner entry to one. And just really tough part of the corner. The car is really light. And uh, obviously a, a small push when you're racing that close, you know, only a few inches door to door uh, generates some contact. Yeah, and the majority of these cars that involve nothing, nothing they could do. There Tony gets into the 97 of Jason Kitzmiller. And everybody else is just checking up, trying to miss yeah. it. I mean, half doing the their best to try to miss it. See the 28 on the right Ooh. side of your screen spinning around. That's Shane Van Gisbergen. Here's a Sioux chief on board for Tony Breidinger. Yeah, so when that, that push got delivered to the 55, I mean, Tony, you can see by the lines on the racetrack, she was holding her car dead straight. Just uh, got a push. That 02 car came down the racetrack and, and shoved her into the inside lane, and then everyone else is involved. Yeah, I mean, we're two, three laps into the race, and we're already pushing and pushing people sideways into each other. and I, you know, let's get some laps in. Let's get some laps in before we start all the pushing. Yeah, I mean, the urgency was clearly really high for, from some of the guys starting in the back of the field. Obviously, we were talking about Greg Van Alst, who, who was able to bring that third lane all the way up forward and get himself clear to the bottom. And, and right as he was able to do that, get safe on the bottom, uh, obviously, that, that third lane was able to, to cause that wreck. Saw Mandy Chick on pit road as well. So all three of the women who were in the field were involved in that incident there. So as drivers head to the infield care center to be checked and released, we will step aside. We're under caution here at Daytona for the first time this evening. ARCA Racing on FS1 is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. And by Bounty, Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. And we welcome you back to Daytona International Speedway. Arkham and Art Series action underway, but it came to a halt quickly after just six laps. See the list there, about 11 cars involved. And so far, I think we've counted about four cars out of the race for sure. Yeah, unfortunately for now that, that number is even growing right now. A lot of damage to a lot of these trucks. and. We talked a few moments ago about Venturini's. They have five very, very stout cars in this race. Three of those cars in this incident. You see Tanner Gray in the 18 right there. That's a Joe Gibbs racing car. They're always strong here at Daytona. 
Just unfortunate. Amber Balk and Tony Brighting are going to be full time this season. So as cleanup continues here, we have 74 laps to go. Stay with us. You're watching the Arkham and Art Series. What? Welcome back to the Suchi Fast Track 200. And that doesn't look right. That is Shane Van Gisbergen. That's uh, probably the first time and probably not the last time he's going to hear over the radio in his NASCAR career. Hey, can you drive it back? <laughs> and uh, clearly struggling with that one. His first experience on a super speedway unfortunately ended after eight laps. So Shane Van Gisbergen from New Zealand. Six different countries represented in the Arkham Menard series. See Amber Balkan from Canada talked about her. Jill Linster from Luxembourg. World Center of Racing. That's right there, right in the right in the center. Yeah. I was talking to. I don't know how to clear this. I was talking <laughs> to. I was talking to Jill yesterday at, in the garage area, and, and he speaks five languages. Oh wow! In English fluently. That's impressive. He raced, he's a racer in the Euro Series. He actually won over in the NASCAR Euro Series last year. Well, we talked about SVG. Unfortunately, he's outside the medical center with Amanda. And as Jamie just referenced, you're here at the medical center, not where you want to be. What happened? Yeah, that didn't last long, that race. It sucked. Um, real shame. I was just learning. We were getting through a few and um, just trying to be patient. And I saw a crash up ahead and I, I slowed up pretty good, I thought, and I just got slammed from behind. So that sucked. It was a shame for uh, WeatherTech and the team. And yeah, hopefully uh, go better in Xfinity race. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, see ya. He's always smiling. He's just having such a great time running these stock cars. By the way, he will be full time in the uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series as we get ready to drop the green flag once again. Willie Mullins leads him into turn one. That's the Phoenix car. Jake Finch on the outside. Tim Richmond, the 27, lined up behind him. Gus Dean, another one of the Venturini cars. Those are the two Venturini cars that have not had any trouble. The 20 of Jake Finch and the 55 of Gus Dean. Jake Finch on the outside trying to take the lead for the first time. Willie Mullins has led them all on the pole for the first time. Can he clear him? Gus Dean has been able to generate some pretty big runs. He's, he's probably one of our biggest movers of the race between him and Greg Van Alst. Made really quick work in that third lane, get back up through the front of the field. And I think this outside lane will be pretty poised with, with a fast car leading it with, with, uh, with Jake Finch. Justin Monsignor back there in seventh in the number 30. He's a three-time Wheeland Tour champion for Rhett Jones Racing. Nice to see him in the field. Here's Arca debut, first time ever on a super speedway, obviously, doing a nice job. He's in that black number 30 on the inside line, fourth in. That's the car that Frankie Muniz ran last year. Now, Jake Finch has got to make some decisions here. He's gotten clear. He doesn't want to get too far out in front. He's got to decide which lane he wants to lead. It's one of the hardest things to do your first time on a play track is figure out how to actually lead once you get there as this outside lane seems to be generating another run here. But I think I like the strategy, Austin. Just stay next to that yellow line. Stay next to that double yellow line. Don't wobble off the dollar yellow line. Stay on the inside and hope you get enough people lined up behind you. If the outside line goes, we'll caution flag again. Caution is out for the second time for debris. You see it right there. Probably some uh, some tape from some of our damaged cars from the last caution came off there. We rack and try again. 12 laps in. Crush panel probably aluminum yeah. crush panel looks like. Yeah, the field is going to hit that as they there it is right there. Looks Ooh. like Willie Mullins is going to hit it. And then bounce off of Gus Dean as well and back down to the inside of the racetrack. So this will be a quick pickup. So we'll step aside as they clean up that debris. We're under caution here for the second time. 69 laps to go from Daytona. Daytona just has this history behind it. You know, like you're coming around 
The corner is, you know, that's where Fireball Roberts went through the wall. That's where Donnie and Kelly Albro got to fight. I mean, it's just the, the history that surrounds this place. It's Daytona. I always feel like there is extra little anxiety going into Daytona just because everyone just knows like how big of a deal it is to race here and just be on this track. I used to live directly across the street. I remember sitting on that bench at 2 a.m. staring at this place dreaming of racing here one day. You see the lights, you see everything. It's just absolutely top spectacle in all of sports in my opinion. Well, just walking into place is awesome. I think the atmosphere is different from any other racetrack. When I get to stand on the grid at Daytona and, and listen to the national anthem and look at the flag and look at the stands, um, it, it truly just means so much to me. I've told people it, it's like walking into Disney World as a kid. To win here, I, I, it's just, I, can't, I still can't even put it into words. We've had the whole off season and there's a lot of excitement built around um, coming to Daytona and I think that if you can have a good race here, it really sets the tone for the rest of your year. I joke that it's probably going to go on my tombstone that I wanted a tone. Well, that puts it all in perspective right there. Did he really say that'll go on his tombstone winning this race? That's how much it meant to <laughs> Greg Van Alls. I, I believe him, too. Yeah. I, I just loved the uh, emotion of him in victory lane. Actually, it was on the racetrack. Yes. He never, he just got out of the car, and I just loved that so much. Obviously, see the caution flag is out right now. Anytime the caution flag is displayed, you can change tires and or add fuel. We will definitely have a scheduled caution at lap number 40 where all the teams will be able to come down pit road as they choose to put tires and or fuel in. You will not lose your position. However you come down pit road, as long as you don't have a penalty or lose a lap, then you will restart in that position. You will start behind everybody that stayed on the racetrack. And why I say that, we know we're going to have a caution at lap 40, but if we get a caution around lap 25 or 30, a lot of these teams are going to come to pit road, and that's going to be the only time they're going to stop. They're going to forego stopping at that 40-lap caution because they feel like they can go that far on fuel and keep that track position. So a little bit of strategy. Yeah, could I like be. It. Yeah, could for see sure. a little bit of that. Well, Tony Breidinger has been checked and released, and she's with Amanda. And Jamie, we go back to earlier in the day. That excellent qualifying effort gave her a, a start on the second row here at Daytona, but she stands here and says, I am so annoyed. Talk about it. Yeah, I'm trying to be nice since the 55 is my teammate, but definitely is disappointing. It's so early on in the race, really unnecessary move. Um, even later in the race, that would have been a bad move. I mean, you're not clear, you're not clear. Um, it's unfortunate he has a lack of respect for his teammates and other people on the track that work really hard to get here when his dad's just writing the check. So I think that just has to do with his lack of respect. Those are some pretty bold words. I want to go to the collection of the day that you've had. You started in the trucks race today and now finishing up here in your own progression. Are there teaching moments here? Yeah, I mean, we had a great day. Uh, Venture Mirror Sports brought me a fast car. Um, Celsius was on board. It started off amazing. Uh, great qualifying effort. Jake Finch, my uh, teammate in the 20 car, did a great job in qualifying. We worked together. Um, so yeah, just disappointing that the 55 had to just kind of ruin that for all of us. Emotions high, Jamie. Yes, no doubting how she's feeling right now. But I mean, that young lady, she's full time. She's thinking about points. She's not just here to jump in and go for a race win. And what a week she's had. She was up at Fashion Week, you guys, just on Tuesday. She was in a fashion show for Michael Kors. Then she flew down here, raced at New Smyrna, then came down over here to the racetrack and had practice and qualifying for ARCA. So a lot going on with that young woman. Well, I can't tell you anything about going to Fashion Week, but I can tell you doing double duty in one day <laughs> is information overload, especially as you're a young driver trying to come up through the, through the ranks and understand, I mean, the, the truck series, cars race so much different than the Arkham Menard series cars and and obviously uh, I'm sure she wanted to to get this race underway and it's really frustrating to 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 end that way um, but I also say you know, I, I think it was just aggressive pushing early in the race um, that they really caused that wreck um, un unfortunate because it took out you know a good majority of of the field and and as she mentioned her teammates I mean there's a lot of a lot of really strong venture new motorsports cars that got taken on that wreck as well so um, yeah probably some teaching moments in there for for you know a lot involved but um, yeah just frustrating for sure to, to be out of a race that early well no doubt we're gonna see a lot of aggressive pushing come Sunday it is the biggest day in racing and it just got a little bit bigger the Grand Marshal is Dwayne the Rock Johnson we'll kick things off He'll start at all up for the Daytona 500. It's the Great American Race. It returns Sunday at 2.30 Eastern, only on Fox. And there's the newly crowned champion. 
Ryan Blaney and his teammate, Austin Sindrick. Let's just take a look back. This can't get old ever in your whole life. I'm, I'm a fan. This was <laughs> best day of my life. Trying to trying to recreate it this weekend. I can tell you that much. It was, uh, nothing nothing's bigger. Nothing's cooler. Sold out crowd um, and holding that trophy up with with all your friends and family. RP everybody is a uh, pretty incredible ex life experience for me. You had a good car last night too, right? Absolutely. No, we've we've got a really fast Cisco tire Ford. Um, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Teams executed super well throughout the week. So um, we put ourselves in in position to you know execute throughout the 500 and give ourselves a shot at doing that again. Good deal. You guys are looking good. That was such a special day to see you win that race. I know what it meant to you and we well, got to be part family. of it. I was. I got to interview you down there. That's it was my great. favorite part of the job. It was awesome. Well, uh, speaking of pit reporters, let's check in real quick with Heather. Well, Jamie, you guys talk about the experience in this field, and we're looking at our leader right there, Jake Finch. This is his first time racing here at Daytona, and Austin, you mentioned it, information overload for these guys, but Jake has been instructed by his crew chief, Shannon Rush, and his spotter, Tyler Mon, to not do any thinking. Leave that up to us. So tonight, he's going to listen to them and every instruction they give and not make any decisions, but he did tell me just prior to intros, I walked up to him, he had his headphones on, he was zoning in on some music, and he said, Heather, I've never been been this nervous in my life so I'm sure his nerves are peaking a little bit as we get ready to go green well, I think that's great advice never let the driver think that's uh, <laughs> best case so he's got a good guy in the room with Tyler Tyler Mon he will be able to give him give him some good eyes on on what's happening in the field behind him but but leading a plate race for the first time is, is is very very difficult because you're managing a lot of different things and they're all behind you so you can't see them and you have to trust that spotter well she mentioned his crew chief Shannon Rush we mentioned that name so much last year because they went to victory lane 10 times. He worked, of course, with Jesse Love, and they won the championship. All right, green flag is once again in the air. The young Finch in the 20 car. That's Jake Finch leading him once again. His first time racing here at Daytona. Got some movement behind him. Tim Richmond in the 27 coming up on the outside. Ryan Huff up there in the 36, Gus Dean in the 55, and there is Greg Van Alston the inside on the 35. And Alston, I like the strategy of Jake Spence. Just stay against the double yellow line. If that outside line gets some momentum, they pass you, so be it. But don't try to move to the outside. Try to manage those lines at this point in his career. Just stay next to that double yellow line and let them try to come around. Well, I think in his position, to your point, you, you learn more by watching what happens around you instead of by reacting to it. and and. and the high percentage move is absolutely to paint the line. I think on these restarts, as you get organized, obviously the bottom lane seems to be a little bit more preferred. You know, as, as cars still really seem to struggle to, to hold the line in the back of the field, you know, a, a guy that I look at it, it, who's been aggressive at the start of this race is Greg Van Alst. He, he clearly wants to get to the front of the field. They say the front of the field is the safest part of the field. Um, but but I think between him and the combination of, of, of Gus Dean, those are the guys that have really asserted themselves as, as guys that want to move to the front. But this outside lane's dying fast, and you're going to need a few cars to really, really establish that outside lane. Yeah, everybody's going to fight to get back to the bottom of the racetrack. You see Willie Mullins now, our pole sitter, is out there just about by himself, and he's probably dropped out of the top ten. You know, one name we haven't mentioned, you look down on that pylon in the 14th spot, Marco Andretti making his first start here at Daytona, trying to become the third Andretti to win a stock car race here. Of course, his grandfather won the Daytona 500. That was back in 67. His uncle John Andretti won the 1997 Pepsi 400. So that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, right as, right as the camera shot to him, he decided to take a run, and I, th I think he's learning how important it is to still be in the draft. But uh, that, that's how you learn, though. I mean, you, you might even think it's the wrong thing at the time, but you have to know how far a run can carry. And, and it was really cool reading some of Marco's interviews about why he wants to be in this series. He's, he's raced on some of the biggest stage. Ooh, big accident with uh, one of our already damaged cars. Yeah, Mandy, yeah. Mandy Chick, she had a top five finish here last year, was involved in an accident, more than likely probably a tire rub from some damage from that earlier wreck. Tough, tough break for Mandy, though. So Mandy Chick brings out the third caution of this race. That is a tough break. I feel like this race last year, we talked so much about her and her yeah, background. Yeah, such a great run. Got the window net down. It's obviously, uh, seems to be all right, talking with the safety workers. That's a good sign. Working lap 21 of 80 here. Engineering student at Rose Holman Engineering School. 
the fighting engineers. Mm -hmm. Let's take the first look here, exactly what happened with Mandy Chick. Yeah, I think similar to what you said, Phil, probably had a, had a tire go down and saw all the debris on the racetrack, probably from where that tire went down. Crush panel, all, the whole rear fender is gone on that car. Want to get into a rhythm here, Phil? Yeah, it'd be nice. Get some, we, get some we, racing in here. We didn't really get in the truck series either, though. But all these caution laps will be pretty interesting to see what these crew chiefs start deciding to do with 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 fuel strategy. We're getting close. We're getting close to these uh, these crew chiefs taking that gamble and bringing these cars down pit road. How long do you, how long do you think we can make it on fuel? They say around 55 laps, uh, which obviously would be 25 laps. But that's with some with some caution flags and things like that. You know you're going to get some caution laps at the lap 40 caution, mandatory caution. So uh, I think if the, uh, within another five laps for sure, I think you'll see some people come down pit road. Well, young Jake Finch continues to lead 10 laps and counting. Stay with us. We're going to step aside as cleanup continues. This is the Suchi Fast Track 200. Welcome back to the Suchi Fast Track 200. We're under caution for the third time for the Arkham Menard Series. Thanks for joining us. Well, this week's Bounty Rookie Spotlight features a man we were just talking about, Marco Andretti, making his debut here in the Arkham Menard Series. Let's take a look back at what he's done. Very famous grandfather, Mario Andretti. And if you're an IndyCar fan, you remember this moment back in 2006. He came oh so close to winning the 500. And then just two years ago, he's the SRX champion. So Marco branching out, trying some other forms of racing. It's a little look back. It runs in the family, fast as an Andretti. So it's good to see him. He'll be in some truck races and some more Arkham and Arts. Yeah, I think they announced out. 14 Arca races this year. Pretty, pretty ambitious schedule and several truck races. So good to, good to have him around. Yeah, it's fun to have him in the field. So Heather, what are they saying so far? Well, so far, he's happy with his car. He said, this thing sucks up like crazy. But I caught up with him right before the race and said, hey, what do you think? He goes, you know what? I don't really know. All I know is with this ARCA series is that I got to stay open-minded and rely on my instinct. But one takeaway he learned already is prior to one of those restarts, he asked his spotter, hey, just let me know if I'm going to take the outside or inside when we choose. And he said, hey, he doesn't. we don't do that here, buddy. It's just a regular lineup. So one thing he took away was no choose in the ARCA series. <laughs> Well, you watch all those other races, and then you right. hop in here, and it looks the same, feels the same, but the rules are a little different. Yeah, and he ran three truck races at the end of the year, and which yeah. obviously had to choose, so. So, General Tire on board of Andres Perez. And about Justin Bonsignor, you, know, you mentioned three-time wheeling modified champion, General Tire on board for Justin. And you mentioned Andres Perez during our cup practice. He was in the cup garage, Phil, and I walked up to him and said, hi. I said, how are you feeling? He goes, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> and he just looked around at just the enormity of Daytona. As we're back to green once again. We've got two Venturini cars lined up on the bottom. See how they, uh, they're able to stretch this inside lane back out. Or that should bode well, I think, for that inside lane. Ryan Huff has really done a nice job. Qualified great in that third spot right there in the 36 car there's Sean core the black number eight black and yellow number eight Sean always runs well here Willie Mullins our pole sitter right there in the three car how about Jake Finch up front leading his first laps racing here for the first time he has his teammate Gus Dean just behind him Gus knows how to get around these places he's got a couple of super speedway actually has one win at Talladega he won at Elko as well and watching qualifying, the, the group qualifying, you have a couple cars together, and Jake was really able to suck up to the car behind you and, and, and actually lock on in qualifying. And I didn't see many of that really at all throughout the field. So I think you got the fast. Oh, fast no. Cars. Oh, gosh. We've got Christian Rose Christian trying Rose. to hang on to it. Can he save it? They're avoiding him all around. What is any time you can keep it off the wall here is a job well done for Christian Rose. Without a doubt. That's a tough spot being turned sideways in the trial. Almost heaven. Nice save. It's third year <laughs> in the series. Yeah, we have we have one straightaway here at this racetrack, and that's the back stretch. This front stretch is not a straightaway. We get a replay here of what happened here at the trial. We got a little damage to Marco Andretti as well. 
So here he is, bottom lane in the trial. It's like the just 40, getting a push. Car, just, just a push call, yeah. but that's not the place to push it's, in the trial. The corners, I know the ARC officials tell these drivers all the time, Please don't push in the corners or in the trial bowl, and that's that's where it goes bad. It's it's the absolute worst place on the racetrack to to, to give a push, receive a push, because it, you have both challenges. One, you don't have have the 30 degrees of banking that give the car the grip, but also you you do have a bit of a turn, so you're you're asking something out of the tires, you know, laterally, but you also don't have you know the vertical grip in the car to even do it, and then just to get a shot from behind. Um, and we're only 25 laps into the race. Uh, yeah, not not going to work out most of the time. Hey, guys, the Reese's Sweet Move of the Race is back for this year, so I think that could be a nominee. The first one of the year, that great save by Christian Rose. Yeah, the fact he didn't hit anything or get hit, without a doubt, uh, should be a good contender for the Reese's Sweet Move. What's happening here to the move. 17 car? Did he just get hit from behind? Is that the bumper looks, structure? It looks like it. Looks like maybe a bumper brace that's hanging down drag in the racetrack. They continue to work on Amber Balkin's car. Remember, she was involved in that first incident. Remember, these are composite bodies, so that body has a little bit of a memory. That car probably got hit in the back, and then it sprung back to where it was, but the but the bumper bar, I think, is dragging the racetrack. It broke loose from the rear frame section. Now, think, will they be able to cut that off, or do they have to have it secure? I, as long as they have the tail on there, I think they're okay. I think I think they need to bring that car to pit road and get that, get that off, because you certainly don't want that to come off while you're racing and have somebody run over that from behind. He's got some flat flat tires from that spin. You see a little bit of damage to the hood of that race car as well. This is Andres Perez on board. Just to the left, you see the 32 car, Christian Rose to the left. He's gonna get pushed by the 44 right beside, right by, beside of Andres Perez and send the 32 spinning. Yeah, it's fortunate no other cars got, got caught up in this. Uh, you know, Christian's, you know, doing the long hike. He still hasn't even made it back to pit road yet. When you when you slide your tires like this, and he's obviously got the brakes locked down, trying to get the car stopped. But when you slide the tires like that, it, it, it they go flat immediately. And the problem with that is you can even see the hole in the top of the left front right under that general tire logo is that once you do try and run on them and drive at speed, it tears the tire off and rips the fenders off as we see that strategy call we talked about earlier. Here we are. Yeah, you guys set them up perfectly. 25 laps in and our leaders are coming down pit road. Remember, they can take tires, they can take fuel. They just can't do them simultaneously. Just four pit crew members allowed to go over the wall. They're coming your way, Amanda. You'll see Tim Richmond coming to us there. He's going to uh, get the pit stop underway. He said that our starting out this race that it was a two out of a five tight and that he just that the car just did not want to turn. What are you hearing, Heather? Well, for Jake Finch here in the 20, they're fueling the car first, but he just asked his team, hey, do I turn it off right now? Because he thought it was the brake and they said, no, this isn't a brake. Keep it running. So they're going to go to work to change the tires on the 20 as well. But there is a small hole in the valence of the 20 on the nose. So they're going to have to take a look at that damage as well for the for Jake Finch. That's a great illustration. You saw them wait to jack the car up while they put fuel in it. You can have four people over the wall, but you cannot fuel and change tires at the same time. But they have plenty of time. The pace car is in the middle of the back stretch. Pace car lap here is probably around two and a half minutes as long as they beat the pace car out of the pits and don't have any penalties, then they will retain the position that they had when they came in. Having a hard time in the left rear of Tim Richmond throwing his body into it, trying giving to get it, it his all. Yeah, he was. Hey, guys, the effort. we made it. It's actually midnight. <laughs> it's Saturday. This race was supposed to be on Saturday and is on Saturday. We have not We're even mentioned it. that. <laughs> The fact that weather, severe weather, has been forecasted for Saturday. So the Arkham Menard Series, NASCAR, and Fox all got together and said, let's run this race on Friday night, which was a great move. Everybody was happy about that. But now it is officially midnight, and it's Saturday. So here we are. We're happy to have all of you listening, watching. And all the competitors in the Arca Garage were really happy about this. Otherwise, if we if the weather was bad tomorrow, then it may have been a Monday race and nobody wanted to stay till Monday. It's so expensive and hard to find hotel rooms. I mean, this this place is sold out for Sunday. Let's check in again with Amanda. 
Jamie, I was talking to a couple of the drivers ahead of the driver intros, and just to repeat the sentiment that you guys just said, yeah, a lot of these drivers wanted to get this in tonight, but they pointed back to practice in January with some rain situation. It actually pushed later into the day, so they got to race here under the lights. So having some experience in talking to Tim Richmond and getting ready for this race, he was excited to race here at the Super Speedway in a true Daytona fashion. I think racing under the lights is always is always cooler for the drivers, but I will say a night race here in, in my professional opinion has saved a lot of these cars because we've seen a lot of guys struggle for handling, wiggling back and forth. Uh, I'm sure a lot of guys were trimmed out to try and make the race with, with, with 50 cars entered and uh, we, we still have a lot of handling issues, even in these cooler conditions. So I think it's best case scenario for these drivers, as much fun as they're gonna have just racing into the lights in this place, but also I think their cars are gonna drive better than what they would have otherwise. I see Tim Richmond come back down pit road to put fuel in it, so he elected not to do it on the same pit stop. There's big Bill Venturini. So we're officially racing on Saturday and the Xfinity Series plans on racing tomorrow evening. It's all on FS1. The future stars are back with roaring engines and grueling non-stop action. See who claims the first checkered flag of the season. That's tomorrow at 5 Eastern on FS1. It's like the first day of school, right? There's different teams, different sponsors, different everything. There's a lot to get used to, and it's uh, right out of the bag for Speed Week. Everything's new. We were talking uh, about the truck series, and there were six drivers and crew chief combinations that stayed the same out of the top 20. Only six. That's that's incredible. I mean, the Xfinity Series is a lot of a lot of change and, and turnover and, and, and those drivers, so first day of school is, is best way to describe it, no doubt. Well, you guys are all happy. You enjoy talking to us in the press. You know, as, as the year goes goes on, it's like, eh, I don't, I don't want to do an interview right now. But right Have now, I ever denied like an interview with you? Today? You haven't. You get a little intense. Give, give, I get intense. Just a little bit. <laughs> I've never been called intense. <laughs> when it comes to your notes in front of you, yes. Well, we just saw Big Bill Venturini. How about this? 99 wins, Phil. Getting that 100 is going to be a big deal, and I wonder perhaps maybe tonight it'll happen. Yeah, it's going to happen soon. What an amazing, uh, amazingly strong team. The owner championships down there, 87 all the way through 2023 with Jesse Love, and who Jesse Love, by the way, has moved up to the Xfinity Series, so he'll be racing tomorrow. Uh, Danny Stockman as his crew chief over there, racing for Richard Childress Racing. 1987 to 2023 that's an incredible commitment to this series and it uh, really shows how important Arc Menard series is to to kind of the, the infrastructure of, of, of stock car racing longer than you've been alive correct <laughs> <laughs> all right so we've got the 36 of Ryan Huff leading this race Sean core in the eight Remember the reason that Jake Finch is not leading, he'd elected to come to pit road. These cars that will restart in front of him did not come to pit road. A little bit of strategy. We'll see how this plays out. Remember, there is a scheduled caution at or around lap 40. So that's when these other cars will perhaps make their pit stops. 44 of Annunziata, he was the one involved with Christian Rose. Doesn't seem like he really has any damage to his race car. Yeah, and if I'm if I'm Jake Finch, Gustine, all these guys that, that feel like they've they've postured themselves for the correct strategy for the end of the race, they're going to have an 11 lap dash to figure out who actually has the advantage, who's the first car on the winning strategy. So, the, these these next couple of laps with this restart and and how these outside lane guys, inside lane guys are able to take advantage is going to be very important. I, t I think just right now I want to stay clean. I want to keep my body clean and stay out of the carnage. Green flag is in the air once again. Ryan Huff leads him. Sean Core on the outside. Patrick Emerling making a nice run up here towards the front. That's him on the outside of row number two in the 08 car. He'll be doing double duty this weekend, also running the Xfinity race. The field's pretty scattered here on this restart, and you see a lot of compression back there in that 10th to 12th, 13th range where we had guys pit, put on tires, some really fast competitive cars. We're three wide already, trying trying to get that position. Greg Van Alst, no surprise, all the way to the outside, trying to make moves like he did earlier at the race. We've got two Venturini cars lined up in the middle of the field. There's a, there's a lot going on trying to posture for this strategy. 
On the inside line, the number 73 white car, Andy Jankowiak. Haven't talked about Andy J, the pizza delivery man we always talk about. This is the place he runs so well, and I know he and Greg Van Als, if they could get together. You see Three that. wide right now. Look at this, Shane Van Gisbergen. I love that. He wants some experience, so he's going to come back at her. Shane Huffman and his guys did a lot of repairs. You see, that's Dale Quarterly in that four car. He cannot keep that car on the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to need to try to keep that car a little bit lower because he's drifting out into that outside line. And sometimes when they're going to come up on him three wide, there's not going to be room. Wow. These guys still haven't gotten themselves sorted. You got two of the fastest cars in the field going top of three, trying to get back up to the field in front of these other cars. I think uh, I think the Venture cars have, have worked really well where the 75 car has been really struggling for handling stuck in the middle of the field. I think that's why all these guys have been able to make this outside lane work. Yeah, Marco Andretti is stuck behind that car. Three wide as they head into turn one while wow, they're moving all around. Yeah, I mean, Ryan Huff moved to the outside. I'm not even sure why he did that, really. And it's Finch to the point once again. Jake Finch in the 20 working together with his teammate Gus Dean. They went all the way from the outside, worked their way forward. They already pitted. Now they're leading this again. But remember now, Jake Finch leading this race on the pit strategy, possibly to try to make it. You're going to use more fuel leading this race. So that may take his chance if he continues to lead a lot, make his, take his chance of making it out. Greg Van Al shown in the third spot. He has yet to lead a lap today. Sandres Perez, the black number two. Right now running in the fifth spot. See the biggest movers. Dean, we talked about Van Al, Finch, all worked their way through after the pit stop, all up front of this pack. Greg Van Al's the winner last year. Rev Racing teammates, Perez in the two, Lavar Scott in the sixth. See some Nose smoke. Tail. Tire rub looks tire like uh, the 30 car Bonsignor. Got, uh, might, might be worse than tire rub. It's always nerve wracking as the car that's behind the smoking car because you're waiting for something to happen. And hopefully for these guys, it's just a tire rub that's clearancing, but I don't see one particular corner where that's happening. That's where you tell your spotter, let me know when I can get down. There's Perez riding along in this general tire on board. Trying to make his way up right now. He's running in about the fifth or sixth position. He's battling for fifth with Ryan Huff, that white number 36. And these Rev Racing cards are, are, are doing a good job of keeping this outside lane going. Um, as you see, LeVar Scott giving him a pretty nice push as they get a bit of a charge from the outside. Remember, LeVar Scott actually ran this race here last year, had a top five finish, and he was driving for Perez, who wasn't old enough to drive. Here. That's right. So Perez ended up running the rest of the races and finished second to Jesse Love. What a season he had. Ten top fives, 15 top tens, finished top ten in almost every race he ran last year. So even though he hasn't gotten the win, Phil, we always talk about who may be the favorite coming into the season. I would say Andres Perez is. Yeah, without a doubt, one of the favorites. I think LeVar Scott is another driver that you have to put on that very short list of favorites. I've got great news for you guys and your viewers at home. This is our longest screen flag run of the race. Don't jinx it. I like Let's your optimism. I like what Sean Core did. We, we didn't get to see it, but he, he pulled up from the bottom lane, getting to the outside lane to, to really try and charge to the front. And, and Greg Van Ols is, is, is picked up on it and is doing the same thing. I think they don't want to stay behind these Venturini cars. They see how strong they are, and they're trying to work together to get back in front of them. And Sean Core has a lot of experience here at Daytona. He has seven top five finishes in Arkham Menards competition here at Daytona. Greg Van Ols gets a side draft here, is able to pull back Gustine this outside lane charged back up again. I think they, they'll have a good shot at having to run down the back straight away after they get through one and two. See that black number 30 of Monsignor still still smoking and man are they tight there. I really like the confidence Greg Van Alst is driving with tonight because it really shows that win last year wasn't wasn't a fluke. He stayed in the, in the game all day and because of that move pulling up and, and, and blocking the outside lane getting that run he's now in the lead of the race. Stop stop pushing Gus stop pushing long way to go. 
You saw him push the 20 of Jake Finch, push him sideways. Remember, guys, the last time Greg Van Alst was in a race vehicle, it was a truck at Talladega, and he, and he had a bad crash and broke his back. I was just going to say that, Phil. Great minds. We hadn't even mentioned that, that the last time we saw him race anything was that truck race, and it was serious. He was down and out for quite some time. Now he's come back even stronger. He expanded his team to a, a two-car team operation just for this race, maybe a couple more down the road. But Isaac Johnson, another a fellow Hoosier as well, he's in the 34. Well, I can tell you he hasn't slowed him down, and uh, he's, he's really trying to figure out how to, how to control these lines. Does he want to control both lanes? Both Venturini cars get locked on, get the move. Really pushing, they pushed Van Alst back up, so this is going to pack up the field and they're going to have another big run at it. Got about four and a half laps to go until the scheduled caution comes out. A lot of compression in that outside lane. John Gore is going to go through the middle. I really like that move. I, I think it's going to separate these Venturini cars. Gustin's going to have there. a tough time staying with the 20 car. And Jake's like, oh, do I get my teammate? Do I stay in the preferred lane? Meanwhile, I think it's going to help the bottom as these guys are unorganized. Yeah, I think it was a good move that Jake did not move up to that third lane to try to grab Gus Dean. Meanwhile, Greg's a little too far out in front, and there's going to be a huge run coming. Yeah, I think it's too much of a run to try to block that lane, but he got a good good push from Ryan Huff to stay even right now with Jake Finch. Ryan Huff doing really, really nice work so far tonight, the 22-year-old from Williamsburg, Virginia. Look at this battle. He is having a tough time. Ryan Huff in that 36 holding on to that car. And we welcome you all to the Arkham Menard series as you watch the Suchi Fast Track 200. Hope you enjoyed the basketball game. My alma mater, San Diego State University. This Always is like Arca. This is Arca after dark. I know this is Arca after dark. We've been on FS2, so we welcome you, new viewers. Stick with us. We got a smoker there. We've got a great battle for the lead here as well. I think uh, I think the two best cars are leading the field right now, and I think Greg Van Alst is, is probably put on the best display of driving so far. As this bottom lane is is really struggling for for handling and, and getting the pushes, but. Um, I think it's a matter of time before Jake Finch gets clear here because this outside lane's way more organized, got some good pushes from, from some teammates and, and experience of Sean Core. Got the 18-year-old Jake Finch on the outside of the front row, side by side with Greg Van Alst, who has just become a master at this style of racing. And what I'm at what I'm interested in with, with, with Jake Finch at this time, okay, we've gotten comfortable. We've seen the front of the field, listen to my spot or the information I'm getting. What's next? You know, do you pull down, pull the side draft, pull, pull the 35 back? You know, what, what, what are ways that I can create an advantage now as they're getting up the lap car of Shane Van Gisbergen? Yeah, fortunately, all the spotters see that. And Shane's doing a nice job staying up against the side wall, against the outside wall to stay out of the way. So we've reached the halfway point in this race. Yeah, next lap we will complete lap 40. So at some point, I think during that lap, we'll see the caution flag. The scheduled caution, something we do in the Arkham and Art series. They can choose to pit or they could choose to stay out. If they do pit, they can take fuel and tires. The Sioux Chief on board. With LeVar Scott, talked about him doing a really nice job. LeVar just making Ooh. his seventh career start wow. here. That, that exit to turn four is a really tough handling spot, and we've seen the 44 and the 36 get really dodgy off the corner as we, we just hit lap 41. Interesting to see who's got the who's got the lead here as Jake Finch pulls to the bottom and gives Sean Core the lead. We're still under green and uh, Ooh. not clear. Rev Racing cars. Probably a good move, thinking twice about that, get the pack reorganized. Obviously, we're expecting some sort of a caution as it hits right now. And caution comes out. This is the scheduled caution. Oh, and we have cars all the way around as the caution came out. That's Willie Mullins, the 
pole sitter going around. Dale Quarterly, the four, Leland Honeyman in the zero two. Got a couple others back there involved. Somebody stopped on the track. Can't really see the number there. That's the 13 car right there. That's that's Armani Williams. Armani was involved in that first incident, but recovered. And Marco Andretti got caught up in that. See that damage. We know the caution flag was out, so I wonder if somebody let off the gas or, or hit the brakes or whatever, and somebody did not realize that the caution was out. I wonder if there was a, a reaction to the leaders up front. You know, obviously really close to, to wrecking between the, the 20 and the 8, and guys maybe backing off in some accordion here. We've got Mark Andretti already spun all the way at the top of the field. Comes down in Dale Quarterly and uh, other cars just dodging the miss and locking down brakes. Uh, I wonder what further back, probably exit of turn two, how uh, how Marco got uh, got turned sideways. Doesn't look like Leland Honeyman had much damage. You see that's Patrick Emerling, the blue and white car behind Marco. This is about the time the caution is going to come out. I'm not sure it's out yet. Yep, you saw it on the, Did you, the okay, wall right so there. So the caution yeah, is out, but I'm not sure anyone had backed off yet. They, they looked really stacked up in that outside lane. I don't know if the, the, the couple of leaders were backing up, but you know Marco was really tucked up. I believe that was the 55 at Gustine. I think he was trying to stay off of him, and whether if that's due to the fact that Marco doesn't really have a rear bumper anymore, you know, is, is that what makes that push go so bad, or is it just that big of a run? Kind of hard to tell from the from the front-facing angle, but either way, um, yeah, hooked Marco in front of the field. Watch right side of your screen. There's the 70 to Marco. Yeah, so Marco actually never even gets to the back of him, so he was just trying to stay off of the 55 because he got checked up behind, behind, I believe, LeVar Scott. Just a bit of an accordion there. Yeah, Marco may have tapped the brakes to keep him running into the 55 Augustine. How about the camera work of our crew? It's been a long, long day. Sure Second has. race of the day before that, we had Cup Series practice. We had qualifying for trucks, qualifying Xfinity for Xfinity. Practice. Xfinity practice. So hats off to see all the hard workers, producers. That well, is that's the 30, I think, isn't Bonsignor's it? Bonsignor's car. Bonsignor, yeah. That's pretty bad. It right looks now. like an oil leak of some sort. So 38 laps to go. It's been an eventful one. Didn't have many laps under our belt before the big one happened. Big Willie Mullins takes off from the pole. Yeah, the first first incident here really quickly with a couple of teammates racing at the front of the field and. Uh, a little bit of contact and taking out a lot of good fast cars very, very early in this race. You know, Tony, when we interviewed her, he thought she thought it was all Gus Dean, but I'm not sure Gus Dean get, didn't get pushed from behind by the 0-2 of Leland Honeyman. Yeah, I think just a product of being really aggressive early at the race, bad push, and not able to not able to hold the car in a straight line. And um, yeah, obviously she was very frustrated. And then we've got uh, push here through the trial, another another bad place to push. And uh, very fortunate, no other cars got involved in this wreck. And um, you know, Christian Rose was able to keep all the fenders on his car. As uh, we have some really close, close calls there. And uh, now we come to our race break here, and a bit of an accordion. I'm just impressed by that save. Marco keeps it out of the outside wall. He's still got one fender left on it. He's got the right front. <laughs> I don't think Willie Mullins made any contact or significant contact with anybody. See, hard rock, hard rock bet came on board. This Mark Rett, I, Terry I, Jones car. I bet this car isn't uh, going to see the rest of the race, unfortunately. I see what you did there. You like that? I do. I appreciate you. Race summary here. Later, Jake Finch, the 18 year old. Five different leaders. That's too bad for Justin. I mean, every time I feel like I watch a modified race, he's winning it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's 40 seen, times he's won. 40 times is that's a big number. Yes, it um, is. And I feel like he was. Uh, really doing a good job in the middle of the pack. Well, it's time now for our Richmond mid-race report. We send it down to Amanda. Jamie just, a, Jamie, just a quick update on that smoke coming off of the back of the 30. The team does think that the oil is dripping on the headers, but look at the race leader right there as he popped in. Sean Core, he led laps here last year. He finished third at Daytona, so he has experience here on the Super Speedway and knows how to get it done. In this stop, you see the tires going on. They can make changes 
uh, to the car as they will, as long as they get out before the pace pace car. Heather, what you got? Well, Jake Finch, one of the Venturini teams, decided to stay out as well. They're going to go back to saving fuel because they pitted under that last caution. But Jake asked his team, what do I need to do better here? And his spotter, Tyler Mon, said, we just need you to relax. You need to keep a steady will when you're up on top. No aggressive movements and easy on that will. Another gentleman that stayed out is his teammate, Gus Dean, who's pretty good here at Super Speedways. Daytona hasn't been his best, but right now they're just getting shuffled to the back, so they're going to work their way up to the front. But one thing that he's been thinking about all day is his grandfather, Charles Dean Sr. He passed away two weeks ago, but he's riding with Gus Dean on the car. His name is above the passenger side window. It says granddaddy. That's what everybody referred to him as. And he used to tell Gus, get what you can. He, anytime that he was racing, his grandfather would tell him that. So tonight he's thinking about his granddaddy as we all are. And Gus said his grandfather didn't miss a single race. So racing with a heavy heart and how neat that would be for him to get to go to victory lane in his honor. Yeah, in his last days, he said, he said, if, if you're in Daytona, when I pass, you don't come home, you race down there. Aww. All right, we are under caution for the fifth time. We'll line him back up. Jake Finch will once again be the leader. Look at that action. Marco Andretti goes for a wild ride. ARCA Racing on FS1 is brought to you by General Tire. General Tire delivers the freedom to explore. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's, not sorry. So you know my other job is selling cake, nothing but cakes. Our featured flavor right now, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. We have real Reese's Peanut no, Butter it's Cups not. in it. It's really? amazing. We do Reese's Peanut Butter like drizzled over the top. Yeah, it's pretty good. Well, I just watched Phil tackle a little Debbie faster than you could ever imagine. Little Hungry bite. Hippo over little here. Bite. They've got Phil past his bedtime out here, ball and chain yeah. to this to this stool, calling double duty races. It was an intimate little bite. You, you make, earned make sure it. You earned, you earned more than one of them, honestly. <laughs> I might wait till the next next commercial. Oh, they could only see the bag of snacks they handed you, and you just said, "What is that?" And I have a bag of candy. Our Suchi fast track driver is LeVar Scott. Talked a little bit about him and his young career, just making his seventh career start. He's full time with Rev Racing. He did a great job in this race last year. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the end of this race for, for a number of reasons. We got a couple of teammates. I think Greg's a bit of a lone ranger up there in the 35 car, but I, I, I'd love to see what LeVar Scott and Andres Perez can do um, working together against these Venturini cars. Yeah, LeVar was third in East Series points last year. William Sawalich actually won the Arkham Menards East Series championship. Luke Fenhouse finished second, and LeVar was third. I want to go back to something Heather DeBeau reported on Jake Finch. They're telling him to just relax, calm down. Does that ever work for you? Um, sometimes it's a good subtle reminder um, that, that there's other people like watching and that, that care about you. <laughs> as, as funny as that sounds, like, I don't know, some, sometimes you get that reminder, it, it, it's good. Other times it depends on the driver, depends on the team. Like, you know, sometimes you might not want to hear that information, like, dude, I'm calm, like, just give me information. But <laughs> otherwise, yeah, I would say Jake, Jake definitely has a lot going on and, and it's great for the for the team to want him to keep it simple. And uh, I think as you get close to the end of this race, though, I, I think Keeping it simple is, is, is only going to get you so far. You're going to have to understand what's happening around you and, and, and to be able to be proactive on, on, on the runs that are coming. But he's clearly got a very fast car. He's got a very capable teammate with Gustine that, that's along with him in the draft. And looking forward to seeing how he handles this second stage of the race. Yeah, he's already led 30 laps. Let's get a couple more reports. Heather, we'll kick it off with you. Another thing to focus on is trust in your spotter. And that's what Danny Johnson, crew chief for the six of LeVar Scott, just told him. He said, listen, you have to trust what he tells you. He's one of the best spotters up on the roofs, second to TJ Majors in Danny's opinion. So LeVar right now really needs to listen to what moves he wants him to make. Amanda? Heather, I stopped by to talk to Tim Richmond, and he was taking a nap prior to the race. So I talked to his dad and team owner, David Drisman. He said, yeah, my boy is just calm, cool, and a collected. Is that, that's what helps him in these scenarios. He said he was so proud of the qualifying effort he did today, the best of his career. Amanda, there's a big story with this car he's driving, the 27. This is the one that was stolen 
at Kansas, I believe it was two years ago. They got it back. They've obviously repaired it. And here he is racing, and he's been running in the top 10 the whole race. Drove it like you stole it back, right? I think we <laughs> used that line, right? <laughs> All right, Finch leads him on the inside. Greg Van Alst on the outside. Andres Perez is right there in the mix. LeVar Scott as well. Teammates side by side in the second row. Looks like both rows are, are, are very organized right now as they kind of distance themselves from, from the back of the pack. But I think these, these are going to be the cars that decide the end of this race. I think we haven't seen a lot of any Jankowak's car um, today, but he, he's been a contender in a lot of these races as the bottom lane seems to be able to prevail in these restarts a little bit better than the outside. Yeah, this is the first time that he's showed any muscle up here towards the front. Andy knows how to get it done here. Had some great finishes last year running on a part time basis here in the Arkham Menard series. Andy J, that's the gray number 73 fourth car on the inside that we're speaking of. Wheeling Engineering on board. Does a nice job getting some sponsorship, but he's still a pizza delivery guy. Every time he gets a tip, he puts it in his racing jar. Uh, and I asked him down in the garage here, I said, you still deliver pizza? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to stop that. I love it. Ryan Huff back there trying to fight his way back forward. The 36. Let's get an update on Andy J. Heather. And you talked about that pizza delivery. Well, this is the car that he bought with his tips a couple years ago from Kenny Schrader. And every car he has, he names. This one is Mary, short for <laughs> Hail Mary, because he literally put his entire savings into buying that race car. But Andy is good on these super speedways. He had a little bit of trouble earlier, but we'll see if he can keep it up front and get a nice finish tonight. Hail Mary. You don't get those stories in the Cup Series, Austin. That's fantastic. I absolutely love everything about this series for those reasons. See Greg Van all side drafting very aggressively on the 27. This outside lane's getting, yeah. getting a bit of steam back to it. I, I think if one of these guys pulls out front, I, I want to know how badly Gustine wants to get back to the front of the field and back with his teammate. Because if Greg Van Alst is able to pull this outside lane through, that's that's going to be the, the only chance he's going to get to be able to pro promote himself back to the front of the field. Yeah, we talked about Gus losing his grandfather, and he said, I'm going to win this thing for my grandfather. He already won this week. He was racing over at New Smyrna, went to Victory Lane, dominated the race on Sunday night. You know, I looked at his uh, his schedule. He's racing oh, oh, at least six times. Saw Sparks. I think we're sorted. I don't know how we didn't wreck, but it's it's definitely separated the field, killed That's the outside lane. Jill Lunster in the 68. Leland Honeyman Jr. looks like he's got some damage on the right front. We have tire rub as well. Let's see the replay here. Another push by the 44. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Another another great spot to not push is is entering the corners. Uh, so we've we've covered all the spots to not push and that's one of them. Um, Thomas Anunziato. Yeah. And, and the reason why that is, is is because the car just gets really light as it drops into the banking. Got a lot of damage on, on I believe, Leland Honeyman's car. Um, got a car in the grass here. We're, we are still under green. Brian Roulette, he's got a lot of damage. He's crab walking. Front of the field is now single file. Like I said before, that, that, that business in three and four with that car on the apron uh, really separated the field. We've got everyone single file. And yeah, all the way back, single file. It's the first time we've actually seen this. The entire race. We're losing cars, Jamie. It's, we are. Uh, it's difficult when you, when your pack's a lot smaller to be able to generate the runs on the outside. And there's a long way to go here, so there's no reason for these drivers to jump out of line here. I mean, if we're inside of 10 laps to go, then maybe we need to do that. Well, that could have been another Reese's Sweet move of the race. Remember, on Monday, visit ArcaRacing.com and see oh, oh, crown gosh. Reese's Sweet move of the race. Is this another oh, one? Big Willie saved it. He saved it. What a great save. The magical day continues. Hang on to it, Willie. He's keeping it down there. And that has uh, separated the field even more. Um, man, I wonder We're if he just got green. loose there. I think there might have been a little bit of a touch there from, yeah. from Armani, Armani Williams. Add it to the list of don't push here. Yeah. Uh, wow, what a good save. Look how much steering he's got in that thing. On board here from, from LeVar Scott. I mean, he is. That reminds you of that Kyle Bush save. I don't know if it was 2015 or when something. When he won like the that. clash. When yeah, he won the yes. clash. I mean, he is 
I mean, look, look at the tire tracks he's leaving. He's, he's more than 45 degrees sideways. And Big Willie never got out of the gas. He's <laughs> standing on that thing. What a save. Good the man. Visuals. Yes, I think that's a nominee for the Reese's Sweet Move. That is that is absolutely dovetailing off of your Reese's Sweet Move. It was. Read. Yeah. He did that as I was reading. I now. think that's the favorite right now. Big Willie. First pole. Nice save. I'm sure he's not as enthused about it as we are. He's not. I'm certain of it. There's a second pack now led by Armani Williams. So LeVar Scott was up there. Yeah, LeVar Scott four and five Greg Van Halsten. Earlier, but yeah, he's, he's falling back. He's about ninth right now. And it's tough to figure out what to do in this situation. You know, what I've realized with these cars, the moment they get too wide, it's really going to pull this pack together. But until that happens, these guys are going to have a tough time, you know, pulling these stragglers back up forward all the way to this front four or five cars. Yeah, Tim Richmond and Sean Cora losing touch with that front four right now. Once they were caught, which is going to be in a matter of seconds. And all that's going to do, if they don't pull out of line here, they're they're going to get slowed down. They do pull out of line, get too wide, which is going to slow these guys down even more and distance themselves from, from those front four cars of, of, of Jake French, Perez, Gustine, and Jankowiak. They're they're really sitting sitting pretty, but I think the 73 car is also struggling to hold on to these three really fast cars. While they're single file up front, we're going to step aside. Just 26 laps to go. Look at the visuals on that. And they saved it. And right after that, another save. Who will hang on till the end? Find out soon. Welcome back to the Sioux Chief Fast Track 200. You're watching the Arkham Menard series. Jamie Little joined by Phil Parsons, Austin Sindrick, Heather DeBow, and Amanda Busick are on pit road. And we are under caution once again for the sixth time now because of this. Sean Corr with an incident. Yeah, originally, Austin, I thought maybe he cut a tire, but watch the car's going to start sparking like maybe maybe he's, he's broken a track bar mount or something like that, but it's going to turn it sideways. He's running sixth at the time and uh, does a good job keeping the car off the wall, but does bend the nose up quite a bit. And uh, like Phil mentioned, I think I think something more more suspension related happened there. I mean, you saw a piece go flying and hit the outside wall, but uh, all four tires are up once he got stopped. Um, what if he drives away rate. from this, though, he looks like he's trailing some sort of fluid. So don't know whether that happened when the nose came down and hit the apron or not. You can see how it's bent the nose up there. Yeah, tough, tough deal, but it will definitely pack us back up here with uh, with 23 laps to go as, as he's obviously out of the car and I think that's day done for for a for a fast car. For Sean yeah, Cor. It's going to be terminal for sure. That's well, got to be frustrating running sixth with 23 laps to go and now his day is done. So Jake Finch continues to lead Andres Perez, Gustine, Andy Jankowiak will be back 22 laps to go. Stay with us. This is the 61st annual Arkham and Art Series race, and there sure have been some notable winners over the years. Your brother, Benny Parsons, Tim Richmond, 1981 winner. How about a young Ryan Newman back in 2001? His shoulders weren't as big then. <laughs> and of course, Kyle Busch, man, he's done some winning here at this racetrack. Hasn't won the one he wants. The race on Sunday, the Daytona 500. He still has a place for that trophy somewhere. These caution laps are going to help these drivers that are trying to make a 65 lap run to the end. Last pitted on lap number 25, the top four in the running order pitted on lap 25. Well, I believe Amanda may have caught up with a former Arca Menards winner here at Daytona. Amanda. Jamie, I think what's awesome, there's 21 laps to go, and the drivers on track are going to be looking to add their name to the list of the notable drivers that have won here at Daytona. And that's why I got this guy, Grant Enfinger. You talk about winning at Daytona. I asked you off camera, where does that rank? Tell those guys. It's definitely special. I mean, anytime you can point the victory lane here at Daytona International Speedway is uh, it's special. Just driving through the tunnel is special here. Um, 
but to, to cut the victory lane is obviously special. Had a few good nights here, uh, a couple in the ARCA car and, and one in the truck. Uh, I was aiming for one of those tonight. It just uh, it didn't work out. Um, kind of got caught up in the, in the in the last lap chaos there. Uh, both me and Cody did. And then uh, CR7 also has an ARCA car here. It got caught up in one of the first lap crashes in the ARCA car. So uh, typical kind of Daytona. Uh, I always love this place. Sometimes it loves me back. One of the things that I love about Grand Infinger when we're doing our research, especially from the truck series to ARCA, I often see you hanging around in the ARCA pits. Does it ever leave you? I love racing. So, um, you know, I, I love racing. I, I enjoy this stuff. I'm not going to ask you about Phoenix anymore, I promise. You can ask me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Grant. And we talk about this being a development series. I mean, so many of the faces that you saw winning in this series have now moved up. I mean, there's many notable winners. How about the last three champions in the Arkham and Art Series? Look at them here. How about Nick Sanchez? Just got his first career truck series win about two hours ago. You see Ty Gibbs up in the Cup Series right now. He parlayed an Arca Menards Championship next year, an Xfinity Championship. And Jesse Love, no doubt, he's going to have something to say in the Xfinity Series this year. Ten wins out of 20 in this series last year. For Jesse Love, it was quite impressive. And guess what? That 20 cars leading here tonight has led the most laps. Yeah, those 10 wins remind me of, uh, of a guy, the last guy to win more than 10 times in the modern era, and that was Tim Steele. And unfortunately, we lost him within the last couple months. Uh, what a great talent. Three-time champion here in the Arkham Nard Series. Thinking of his family, I'm glad that you mentioned that. So 20 laps to go. Jake Finch has done a heck of a job. He's led 43 laps so far. Andres Perez in his second season here. First time ever at Daytona. Green flag is in the air once again. Got yeah, those Venture E teammates lined back up again. Which is going to be uh, paying some big dividends as a bit of a question. Not clear. Yeah, Andy, not clear. Tim Richmond's there. Andy J in the 73 trying to get into that bottom lane. There's Greg Van Alst wondering where he went. He slipped back a few positions. Tim Richmond's made a nice recovery up here in the third spot on the inside line. Ryan Huff taking a peek there on the outside. Remember we were single file before that caution came out? Not anymore. When's go time? Ooh, great question. I, uh, I think it all depends on how long this outside lane stays in. We've got two really, really fast cars. And around spin the goes back. the 99. That's Michael Maples. The wall. Oh, gosh. And another Impact. huge hit. And they hit again. And there's change. Mentioned Scott Melton. Is that big, big Willie? That was Big oh. Willie that hit Scott Melton. Willie Mullins right there in the three. He was the pole sitter. Looked like he, he was... He hit him really hard, and then it looked like it hung the throttle wide open almost. And yeah, a couple big impacts there. Obviously, uh, Scott Melton getting hooked head on into the wall. He obviously had a big wreck here in last year's race, and um, I'm sure he's uh, disappointed with uh, with that result. And uh, Big Willie with pulse in car, um, unfortunately stranded in the uh, in the grass here. Curious what happened to this car right here, Michael Maples. It looked like he was the first to go around. Wonder if he had some help. It was announced that he will be running full time this year for Andy Hillenberg. Look at look at all the damage to Big Willie's. They're having to Mustang. help him get that window net down. Usually drivers will put that window net down if they're able. That's a good sign that they are okay, but since they are helping him just want to make sure he's okay you can see Scott Melton moving around in his car on the right they're continuing to talk to Willie Mullins so let's take a look back see where this all went sideways you can look for that 99 car in the uh, right side of your screen gets Pretty wide coming off the corner and just, just loses it. Loose, got, just got loose. He's got something sparking back there. I, I think he had some sort of an issue 
where he lost the back of the car because he was kind of tracking up the racetrack all the way on the exit of the corner by himself and then obviously collects uh, kind of a bystander there in the in the 69 car and, and really Mullins hits a ton in the back of that car. And it's hard to see it from this angle, but there was a lot more smoke than it looked like probably from, from the angle that we were looking at it. So Willie was probably in that smoke. Yeah, He's going to catch Melton yeah, in the right back. rear corner. Tell you what, that was a great evasive maneuver by that that black car there, and a lot of these other guys missing some of this some of this debris. And then you got SVG here coming to pit road and just rejoining the race, and he tattoos the infield. Chantel, the 75 goes around. You could see it right there where you mentioned that it looked like the throttle hung. Hoping that Willie is okay. So violent, you see Hard, that yeah. impact. They have brought the red flag out. But I'm hearing the fans all applauding, so that is usually a very good sign mm -hmm. to say that they see the driver exit the car. Of course, very thankful for that. Yep, there he that's is. A, that's a great sight right there. Darn. Thanks to the fans. Not the way he wanted to see his day end. It was going so beautifully, the emotion that we saw in him when they announced that he had the pole. Mm -hmm. It was just beautiful. He and his wife just hugging and everybody coming up and high-fiving him. I know I was talking to him and his wife, Dinah, yesterday, actually before qualifying, and she lost her father uh, just in the last couple of weeks and said he's the, he's the reason they're able to do this was her father. So mm. they, have, uh, they, have his, they have his name on the, on the car. And, well, it's good to see him walking under his own power, getting back to the ambulance, clearly aware, talking with all the all the safety workers there, and he'll get checked out. So, Diana's dad's that. name was Dutch. Called him Dutch, and that's the name on the top of the car. Aww. Quite a bit of cleanup from this latest caution. That's the seventh one of the evening. Red flag is out, 17 laps to go. You hung with us this long? Stick around. Let's see who wins this. It's the Suchi Fast Track 200. You are looking live at the moon as we are approaching 1 a.m. in the east, but it's still prime time in the west. So we appreciate you all joining us for the Arkham and Art Series, and we're hearing from some drivers that are watching us. They're in their motorhomes, just kind of tuning in and can't believe that we're still going strong. And yes, we are live. We got race fans still here, too. I love the commitment of the Daytona area race fans. It's fantastic. They got a, well, a last minute double double header. Absolutely. Just supposed to be the trucks yeah. tonight, and they got the Arkham and Art Series action. Hey, uh, Jake Finch, we've been talking about him doing a fantastic job, has led the most laps. Let's dial him up. Let's do it. Hey, Jake, Phil Parsons in the Fox booth. You got a copy, buddy? Yes, sir. Got you loud and clear, Phil. Man, you have done an awesome job. We're really proud of you up here, and I know your dad's proud of you up here. James, your dad, James, has won here twice in the Xfinity Series, and I know... Uh, I know if you can pull this thing off, it'll be the biggest win of his career. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, just got to get the job done first. Uh, it's not finished yet, so if we could get that done, it'd be awesome. Well, you and your teammate Gus Dean have really done a nice job working together. There's some other strong cars up there, but do you guys have a plan for the end of this thing? Uh, I have no idea so far. Uh, just trying to do my job up for here and and do what I'm do what I'm told. You know, I got Shannon Rush on top of the box who. He's such a good guy and has been such a big deal in my career. And, and, and same thing with Tyler Mond. He's like a brother to me. And, and he does a great job uh, on, on, on the stand up there um, today and, and Sunday, tomorrow on the Daytona 500. So I'm um, super grateful to have these guys behind me and just uh, excited to see what we can do. Hey, Jake, it's Austin Sindrick watching you here. Have you ever looked in the rearview mirror this many times in a race? Actually, I haven't looked at it many times uh, tonight. Um, 
just have a lot of faith in Tyler and, and everything he says. You know, he does such a good job. And I'm um, just trying to listen to what he tells me and do what I'm told, and uh, it'll all work out, you know. Awesome. Well, best of luck. You're doing a great job. Thanks, Austin. So much trust in your spotter. I mean, right there, he's not even looking in his mirror much. He's just listening. Good for him. Love it. That's awesome. Let's get some reports. Let's check in with Amanda, who's with a very happy father right now, right? Absolutely. And, Jamie, we're almost rounding into that 1 a.m. time, and I love <laughs> that Phil called it Arca After Dark because David just told me his nickname is Sunny. And we were talking earlier just about you being out here and sharing this experience with your son, and you told me how calm, cool, and collected he is. But how are you with this part, the watching? Well, it what, what makes me very nervous is Tim's a journeyman lineman. He works on 60,000 volt power lines. That makes me nervous. Out here, he's in the safest equipment in, in the world. You know, he's been in, uh, collected in a couple accidents, but this year uh, versus two years ago, we got a great crew. Two years ago, we ran out of gas in overtime. Uh, and so we think we're good to go. Uh, we pitted one lap after the Venturini cars, so we got one more lap of gas than they do, so we think we're good to go to the end. He's currently sitting in third. There's 17 laps to go at the present. What would you say to him right now? Just nervous. Nervous. Wish my wife was here, but she's at home. <laughs> Thank you, David. Good luck. Thank you. Didn't he say he wasn't nervous? He's more nervous <laughs> about his day job, and here he's not, but he's like, the dad overtook him. I'm nervous. I love that emotion. Let's hear from him. What do you think? Yeah, we talked to the dad, see if we can talk to the son. Hey, Tim Richmond, Phil Parsons in the Fox booth. You got a copy, buddy? Yeah, I got you, Phil. Well, we just talked to your dad, and he said he's nervous. You're doing a great job up here running in the third spot. In, inside of 20 laps to go, you got a plan to try to get this thing to the front. We know a couple years ago you were fighting for the lead and ran out of fuel. What do you got for him? Uh, try and make it to the end, Phil. You know, it's a race of survival. A lot of things can happen in these last few laps. So, uh, team's done a great job all night. They've worked effortlessly getting this car put together, making it fast. So, hopefully, uh, we just make it to the end with a good finish for us. Well, you certainly have done a great job. Finish it off. Appreciate it, guys. Oh. <laughs> the emotion of the parents. Just love it. This is a huge moment. His son has been running top 10 the entire race. You see the 27 listed as third right now. Well, it's we know Dave's is. nervous. He said he was nervous, but <laughs> Tim sounded pretty cool, didn't he? He did. Gus Dean, we've probably talked about him more than anybody tonight. He's been aggressive, made a lot of moves, kept himself up there. When I look at our top seven cars, they're honestly probably our seven best cars. So uh, I think we're going to have... A lot of guys trying to jockey for position at the front of the field. It'll be interesting to see what the Venturini car is doing this restart, having to be lined up one, two, inside, outside. Do they do a teammate restart? Do they do they just race it out? Um, and then uh, then having having the rev cars up there as well, um, being able to, you know, are they able to hook up and, and run together? And, and I, I've talked about him. I think he's impressed me more than the other driver trying to get to the front of the field. Our, our winner last year, Greg Van Alst, um, trying to kind of recover that track position from, from, from some of those times where the, those uh, outside lane dies and he falls back to the field. Heather, who do you have? Well, catching up now with our leaders, crew chief, Shannon Rush. And Shannon, we heard Jake talk about how good of a guy you are, but also you have a special relationship. You tend to bring wins to the Finch family, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just really forward. I get along great with them. Um, James is a great guy. I like Jake, too, a, a ton, you know. First time I worked with him was at Dover, and we won that race. So um, I joked around with him in the off season. I said, you know, maybe we should just stop here, and we could be at 100%. Um, so I hopefully we can stay at 100% after the race tonight. But he's been doing a great job. Now, he's had some nerves, so what are you telling him to calm those nerves? Anything I can. He doesn't. It's probably the biggest stage that he's ever been a part of. Obviously, he's been here several times with his, with his dad's teams. Um, but it's, it's tough for a young kid, you know. It's just 
I don't know what to tell him. I tell him everything I can think of, you know. But he's done great. You know, he's gotten better every one of these restarts. I wish we could run some green flag laps here um, and just kind of get single file and just drive to the end. But um, I've about had to force him to drink fluids and, and eat. So hopefully uh, we can take this number 20 Phoenix Racing Toyota Camry to victory lane and I'll spray him with water. <laughs> well, good luck on trying to keep it 100% and getting another win for Jake. But we're going to talk to another crew chief as part of the Venturini Motorsports team. This is Kevin Reed Jr. for Gustine. And Gus does well here, yet you kind of have a little bit of a curse. So are you going to overcome that tonight? I hope so. And I mean, working with Gus, like working with the Iceman, nothing shakes him. So I wouldn't want anybody else driving this 55 Dean Custom Air Toyota Camry. We brought our friends with us, and it looks real friendly on that front row right now. But we're going to work together, see what we can do, and then we'll battle it out at the end. Now, you're right behind Jake Finch right now, so teammates come into play. Obviously, you guys lost a few of those early. So is there anybody else you're looking to work with, or are you going to stick with the team? Nah, like I said, we brought our friends with us. I think that's our best shot we got. We're going to do some teammate restarts here and go shut this thing out. Good luck. Thank you. I like it. And Heather, you're wearing Venturini blue. Fit right in, girl. How about the ladies working the pits tonight? What a long day. Doing great job, bringing the energy. Got 16 laps to go. And going back to Shannon Rush. So he talked about the close relationship he has with James Finch, and he's been in that organization. Do you know he was actually the crew chief for Brad Keselowski when he drove that number one Phoenix racing car to Victory Lane in Talladega? That was 2009. He wasn't listed as the crew chief, but he was the physical crew chief there. So he's got a pretty good track record with them. Shannon's clearly won a lot of races in this series, and I don't know about you, he almost seemed kind of nervous for the end of this race. He clearly cares a lot about the family and, and, and the job that Jake's doing, and uh, I, I think this one seems like it would mean a lot to him. He said he'd spray his driver with water. <laughs> well, he's only 18, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, Andres Perez, we've talked about him as well. He's in the number two, Rev Racing, full-time this year, running third right now, and he's, he's done a great job tonight. Remember, he wasn't old enough here last February to run this race. Look how cute. Start to be born in 2005. Goodness gracious. He was a truck, uh, Mexico truck series champion he actually ran full-time at last year in the next uh, nascar mexico series while he was finishing second here in the arca menard series he finished in the top five last year in points in the nascar mexico series and he ran the the race out in, at the coliseum the nascar mexico race and had a top 10 finish there he was actually the youngest winner ever in the nascar mexico series so he's been doing a lot of racing in his career we're happy to have him full-time here just knocking on the door of his first career win just like Nick Sanchez was all last year, and he comes out swinging first race, gets that win. So 15 laps to go. Jake Finch continues to lead. He's led 48 laps tonight, has done a heck of a job. Gus Dean right behind him. It's been a minute since he's gone to victory lane. He's pretty hungry for that. He finished second last year at Talladega and second at Michigan in a limited number of starts here for Venturini. They're continuing to clean up here, so we're going to step aside. 15 laps to go. You got to stay with us. We'll be back for the Sioux Chief Fast Track 200 finish. And David Pearson now moving up uh, from third position into this three way battle for the lead. But look at this Mario Andretti, who led earlier, first past these other three cars. The, uh, the man that's leading this race, he's the one that's struggling, the one right behind. He can just uh, sit there uh, with all kinds of confidence. Right now, however, it doesn't look too difficult as he wings out in front of the field at speeds of over 180 miles an hour here at Daytona. Mario Andretti ready to take the checkered flag, and there it is. He made it. Mario Andretti has won the 1967 Daytona 500. How about that footage and the call by Jim McKay? Seeing Mario Andretti, the IndyCar guy, the open wheel guy, comes down here and wins the Daytona 500. And now we're talking about his grandson, Marco Andretti, who he's beat up and bruised and battered. He's been through it, but he's currently 13th and still on the lead lap. Yeah, certainly a top 10 is not out of the question here at all for Marco. Let's take a look back at one of the incidents he had. See, Marco's getting to experience every angle of Daytona today. 
Yeah, the backwards part isn't that much fun. The backwards though. part, the grass. He's uh, he's had quite the cultural experience uh, introduction to the to the Arc Menard series. But uh, to your point, Jamie, he's still in the lead lap. Still uh, 13 laps to go. Um, yeah, being caught in this draft can can easily make a beat up car look uh, look faster. That's for sure. So should be uh, should be interesting to 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 see what he thinks of this experience after it's over. And the guy right next to him, Christian Rose. He had that huge save. We called that the first Reese's sweet move of the race. And he's back out there. He's got a chance sitting in 12th right now. So we heard from uh, some of the crew chiefs at Venturini Motorsports. It sounds like they're doing a bit of a teammate restart here. So letting the let the 20 come down in front of the 55. And uh, that should really help this inside lane get going. So um, you know, the sooner that the, the other cars, the other, the other teams can recognize this and take advantage, but uh, otherwise, the, 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 the goal here is to really string out the bottom. I like the strategy here for the Venturini cars. So it'll be 12 laps to go with the line. Jake Finch, Gus Dean, side by side. Let's see if that gamesmanship, that team, it did exactly like you said. The 20 slips in front of the 55. Tim Richmond in the 27 in the outside line getting that energy. How about LeVar Scott leading that outside line with Greg Van Alst. Tim Richmond falling back like a rock. No help at all. You see him going backwards in the middle. He's going to fall to the very back of the pack. No help in the middle. And what's happened here is we've got two of these rev racing cars really close in proximity to where they can work together. And really take the fight to the to the Venturini cars. Van Alst on the bumper of the number six of LeVar Scott. LeVar Scott's teammate is the number two. He's third in line on the inside. Yeah, LeVar Scott would love to be able to get with his teammate. Ooh, big save in the back of the field off the front bumper of the 44 again. Unfortunately, this outside lane just doesn't have enough cars, doesn't have enough strength on these restarts to, to really be able to recover. And it takes a while, and, and, and we've got two of the fastest cars at the front of the field. See at the very tail end of that pack, the 32 of Christian Rose, a nice recovery from his spin earlier. Absolutely. I asked you earlier, Austin, when is go time? And so often in the Cup Series, Xfinity Series, they say with about 10 laps to go, that's really hammered down. But you said it's situational. Absolutely. And, and, and right now, the situation is this this lead pack is getting away. And if I'm Greg Van Alst, if I'm LeVar Scott, my opportunity to win this race is, is driving away from me. And, and with only 10 or 11 laps left, you have to be able to understand what it's going to take to get back to the front of the field. Well, if that's getting getting organized, does that mean you're getting down to the bottom of the field? Obviously, you've, you've lost touch with your teammate. The only teammate in the field is, is, is third right now. So he's in a, he's definitely in a tough spot. And, and I, I think your guys that have an opportunity are, are these are these six cars that are in a single file line. You know, our spotters going back and talking to each other, you know, between the, the two car, the 73, the 13, the 62. You know, are, are, we, are we finding spotters making deals, trying to figure out what, what it's going to take to pass these Venturini cars, generate a run? And, and when you get too wide, it's going to pull up this pack of, of, of two wide cars back really quickly. So I think having a plan here in the next 10 laps, spotters are going to be running around on the roof trying to understand what, what's going to work, work best for them. And in Nuziata, in a, in a 44, he doesn't want to just back off and let the six in front of him, even though that would probably help if they could get single file. They're not, they're not that far behind oh, that six car pack. A huge run there from the 35, really stacked up this outside lane, and it's kind of released uh, Annunziata and, and, and Andretti to really try and close back up to that lead field. I'd be interested to see if they could join them because now they don't have that side draft effect. I'm really impressed with the 17 of Andretti that he's hanging on as well as he is. Yeah, right now running up in the top 10. Lavar Scott trying to close in on the bumper of Marco. But where did Van Alst go? Unfortunately, he's he's still stuck. There he is on the outside. Wide. Trying to make something work. Drops down in front of Ryan Huff. So now with this field single file, you should be able to see everyone start to close back up to these leaders. And then at that point, who's going to pull out and make a run? Yeah, you're going to have the momentum when you get there. That may be the best opportunity. I, I you're going to have to have help. I completely agree, but you can't pull out a line without help. Yeah. 
That's where the spotters need to be working together. Say, hey, if we get there, will you go with me? Nuziata decided not to take that run. He didn't really have any help from behind. I don't think he had enough momentum to even try it. He's in the 44 car. And Van Alst does have a teammate, but he's nowhere in sight, so he's out there by himself. And he's the type of guy who goes around in the garage. He talks to the guys that he watches in practice. Things will run well with him. So you think he's kind of picking and choosing at these moments who he knows he can trust and try to move forward with? Yeah, well, I, I think trust is, is the big factor because here in, in, in everyone's kind of got an equal gap right now. So the only way to generate a run is to generate a gap. And when you generate a gap, you have to lift off the throttle and trust that the guy behind you isn't going to just leave you out to dry or be going to be able to deliver a push that's that's comfortable enough to get to the front of the field as you see some some pushes coming from the middle of the pack there from the 44 car. How about that blue and white number 13 of Romani Williams right now running up in the top five doing an amazing job. Yeah, he's kind of been quiet all day, kind of just snuck up here in the top five, but He's uh, he's in great position right here, you know, to be able to be be one of the first ones to make a move as, as there's a ton of energy as he's tucked up right behind the 73. And it's right in that part of the pack where he's got enough cars behind him that I think are, are, are poised to go out and help. It's just understanding the right time to make that move. The 62 Steve Lewis Jr. haven't talked about him from Ransomville, New York. He has Reed Sorensen as his spotter. Saw Reed walking around today. Longtime Cup Series driver. He finished 13th here last year, so he does have a little bit of experience. Yeah, he's in the right place when it counts most. Six laps to go. Meanwhile, no change at the front of the field. Jake Finch got the, the best view out of anyone in, in, in the field, and I question his feedback on whether or not he's uh, looking in the mirror because uh, that's <laughs> that's that's what's going to become really important in, in, in how long they stay committed. I could not look in the mirror. Oh, I mean, it's... It's either a lot of trust in your team or uh, you just trust that your car is fast enough. But uh, when, when it comes down, I mean, we're, we're five laps to go left in the race. You're starting to get nervous. Things are going too well at, the, at this point in time. And there, there's there's guys behind that have, have got to be getting impatient. I mean, I think we typically look in the mirror probably 50 percent of the time. I mean, just glance out front and then look in the mirror. It's just a constant. There'll be laps that I'll be leading at, at a super speedway and I never look out in front of me. I mean, you sometimes just have to be glued to what's going on behind you and, and in tune with the information that you're you're getting from the spotter. But I, I think everyone has to do that differently. It's going to be four to go this time when they get to the line. You now we came into this race and it's always the question who can stop Venturini Motorsports if anybody. They've won eight of the last 13 races on super speedway races, race tracks. Corey Heim, the last one to do it. He did it here in 22. And Jake Finch, boy. Working 60 laps led so far tonight. So oh, impressive got a, with this got young man. We've got a car on fire. We've got a car two. on fire. There Marco it is, Andretti. Marco Andretti. He's had that damage, had a couple issues earlier, and the caution is out for the eighth time with about three and a half laps to go in this race. Oh, wow. More than likely, we will have a one lap overtime shootout. I don't think we can do team orders there. I don't think there's any way that, uh, that they would allow team orders like that or, or the teams to do that. It yeah, should, should be really interesting to watch this strategy here as you see Marco get out of the car and oh, what happened here. Obviously they're all just running single file. So whether that's just from damage from before started smoking on on corner entry there turn one right front tire flat into the wall probably mm -hmm. cuts an oil line or something yeah. caused that fire. He was running up in the top 10. I when we talked before about him running just outside the top 10. It was not out of the question but uh, that's going to be the end of it for Marco. Tell you what, our newcomers have had a very tough time. We yes, got they have. a modified legend, you know, have a have a mechanical problem. We got, you know, oh, look at the smoke there. Austin. Marco Andretti struggling. We got Shane Van Gisbergen out in the first first wreck. <laughs> These guys have not had an easy introduction into uh, super speedway racing. Is that's a that's a tough lick with the right front going down on corner entry from the bottom lane. So you mentioned overtime. So they do have one overtime, as you mentioned, in the Arkham and Art series. So what would happen is they get one attempt at it. They'll bring out the white flag and the green flag together. And then the next lap will end the race, whether that's a caution, the, the, the next flag would end the race. So if it's caution, it freezes the field. And then, of course, if it's the checkered flag, we'll have our clean cut winner. Talk about an important restart now. Oh, my, my other question is how many laps of caution are we going to have? 
Yes, and, and remember these these drivers in the top four right now all pitted on lap number 25. So what does Gus Dean do? Does he play Mr. Nice Guy this time around? Well, I can tell you I have yet to see a restart where the outside lanes hung in there the entire lap. So I, I think if I'm Jake Finch, this isn't really easy. I want to be on the bottom. Inside, without um, a doubt. But it, the, the conversation within the team, yeah, do you do a teammate restart or not? Um, it's, it's a way of guaranteeing your team a win. There's that. Um, and, and I feel like if I'm Gus Dean, honestly, it's probably my best chance to win the race, too. Uh, because I've yet to see the outside lane really pay dividends. They were really able to string out the field um, by at least four four cars clear on the inside row uh, before the start finish line. So I think that's probably Gustine's best chance to win is if they do the teammate restart as backwards as that sounds. But I, I don't see them getting enough of a push on the outside to make it happen. Well, there's Billy. He's he's trying to figure that out right now. That's a that's a that's a great position to be in as a team owner but a very difficult one. The whole teammate thing on super speedways is very challenging to navigate and uh, I see, see someone navigating that at the moment. I see him stepping up to the 20 box right now to talk to Shannon Rush. He probably already talked to Kevin Reed Jr. Now he's going to go talk to Shannon. Can they say no? I don't like your plan. <laughs> well, I think it's they can say that. <laughs> it's important to set ground rules. Just like, just like it's like being siblings. You got to set ground rules when when you, you know, work with each other. And uh, I, I think getting everybody on the same page, and then whether or not if the drivers are in spotters and everyone on track is able to execute it, that's another thing. But it should be interesting to see what they decide. So we're going to have a good finish here. It's been a fun race so far, but we have more racing to come. We've got the Xfinity Series tomorrow, and then on Sunday, the biggest day in racing. It just got a little bit bigger as the Grand Marshal will be Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He'll kick off the Daytona 500. Great American Race returns Sunday at 2.30 Eastern. That's only on Fox. And the guy standing to my right, Austin Sindrick, great qualifying effort. You will lead the field. You'll start the field sixth in the third row. That's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, only five more spots over 500 miles. A spot, a, a spot every 100 miles. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. It's a great opportunity. Biggest race of the year. Really looking forward to it. But um, looking forward to this restart. See what these guys decide. See, uh, see what happens. Whether if there's teammate strategies or uh, a lot of a lot of aggressive pushes. I mean, this is this is your time to go. And we've seen a lot of aggressive racing already. We talk about teammates, and and I, they've always talked about how good a teammate Russ, Gustine is. But but this is Daytona. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know what I you mean. Don't, I don't it changes think, your life. I don't you guys think, always say I don't that, think right? Gus is going to be okay saying, well, I'm going to just push Jake to make sure we finish one, two. And I, and I don't want him to be. I don't want him to be like that. And, and Jake, I, I was like, you know, he's only 18 years old. He's probably going to have a lot of other chances. But this is Daytona. You never know when you're going to get that next chance. And another point is neither one of them are running full time for the championship. It's all about the race win. Absolutely. So have it's at it, trophy. boys. It's about That's the right. trophy. Okay, so we just showed the clock. It's about 1.25 a.m. in the east. So I, I asked our stat boys, what's the latest we've raced here? So they said the latest a race ended here was 2.40 a.m. Back in 2015, it was the summer race when Dale Jr. won. So. Well, I'm happy to hear we're not breaking any records We won't tonight. break a record Yeah. Tonight. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I believe that was the last time Hendrick won a, the Daytona 500 was back in 14. Is that right, boys? I feel like it's been about 10 years. Tell you what, all that speedy dry in the middle one and two. I wonder how many more caution laps we're, we're going to have here. We just saw bit, crew chief on the 20 car. Too, no. He's looking a little worried. Jana was. It was. Uh, I don't. I don't know where they're at. I don't know the mileage of these cars, but we have gone a very long time since since we pitted. I mean, I think green flag laps. They talk about somewhere between 46 and 48, but obviously they know they can they can extend that because of the caution laps. But we've but done what? I mean, we're, we're at 74. The, we're at 74 right now, 74 laps. Yeah, the top four drivers, they last pitted I'm sorry, lap 25. Laps. Yeah, that's, I mean, think about how much time we've been on this broadcast. That's like two two hours of, of driving your car. I mean, that's, yeah, 55 laps since since pit. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a ton of laps. And we've obviously had a ton of cautions, but um, we could see some cars run out of fuel here. Um, it's definitely not over. About 25 of those laps under caution, and uh, and I know that's that's another thing. 
a lot of these young drivers, they've never really had to do this before, never had to try to save fuel. I guarantee you this is the first time Jake Finch has ever had to try to save any fuel, and I'm sure they talked to him about how to do it, and uh, maybe the 25 caution laps are going to be enough to have them have enough fuel to get to the end here. Well, the one thing I saw in that graphic there, we've got two drivers that last pit on lap 37. That's the 13 car and the 62 car. Those are the first cars that, at least us, who don't have all the data and information in front of us, we know that those guys can make it as well as, as, well as Anunziata. So those are the first cars that you know can make it on fuel and, and aren't going to be in threat of, of, of running out. But um, even as we sat on board there with, with LeVar Scott, you know, I, I'd, I'd normally say the, you're shutting off the car. You're, you're, you're pushing the clutch in, you're shutting the ignition off, and you're using no fuel. And I, and I didn't hear that out of, out of LeVar, so maybe there's not as much of a concern or, or, or obviously a miscommunication from, from, from the team if there is a concern on fuel. So um, certainly interested to see if, if, if this plays out in the strategy at all. That's Andy Jankowiak. Let's see what he's thinking right now, Phil. What Let's do you see think? if we can dial him up. Hey, Andy J. Phil Parsons in the Fox booth. You got a copy? I can hear you. Great. Well, Austin and Jamie and I were wondering, what uh, what's your plan here? You're in a great spot right now. You're going to restart second row outside. You're more than likely going well, to have one of the Venturini cars. We're assuming that maybe it might be Gustine. You got, have you guys talked to them at all? Uh, nope. I'm just going to put my foot on the floor, and I'm not lifting till I see God or a checkered flag. My man. <laughs> Sounds good. And I know you have a great relationship with the Venturinis. I know when you had trouble last year at Kansas, they jumped in to try to help you. Uh, but uh, like you say, every man for himself, right? I don't think I have a great relationship with anyone with one lap to go at Daytona. So uh, we'll see. Um, I'm in a great spot. I love my class motorsports team, and what the hell? We got a shot to win this thing at Daytona, so we're going to give it our best. That, that would sure make that pizza taste good when you get home, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, buddy. Good luck. Hi. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everything you do. That was phenomenal. <laughs> that was I am not work, lifting Phil. until I see God or a checkered flag. <laughs> that is the quote of the day. Thank you, Andy J. Looks like we're going to do at least one more lap of cleanup here. I wonder he gets so one many to go. tips. One to go. Gets enough tips to, to pay for his race car. I mean, talk about pizza delivery. He must be pretty quick at that stuff. Yeah, no doubt. It looks like they may have they Fast. may have the same situation. Here. Gus Dean is going to be in the inside. Jake Finch took the outside. They certainly executed it well. The last time looks like Brad Smith is blowing up as it goes through the trial here. Oh boy. He's pulled down off the racetrack and is getting out of the way. I don't I don't I don't think that'll cause any issues. Yeah, but to, to Phil's to Phil's point, we got we got Jake Finch who chose the outside, which we've already established isn't the preferred lane. So we're we're doing a teammate restart again. We're giving both of our cars a shot to win. As you see, the 48 of Brad Smith, he came by the start finish line under our booth here smoking. Uh, and we got safety vehicles kind of following wherever he ends up. Yeah, he's um, well out of the way right now. He's, he's around the end of pit road. Well, out of this the affects way. when we go green. Um, so you saw the overtime rule once again. It'll be a one lap shootout. Next time around, the drivers will receive the white and the green flags. They will have one lap to settle the score. And if the caution comes out, that's where the field will be frozen. Otherwise, they'll race around to the checkered flag. Now we're being told they're going to add a lap of caution because of the Brad Smith issue. So obviously he was leaking some fluid. I want to see sweat on crew chief's foreheads right now. <laughs> is, that, is that a thing? That'll tell us. Yep. Yet another lap. It's another lap for these drivers that are uh, lined up behind these Venturini cars. It's it's very obvious what they're going to do. So how do you, how do you combat it? Are are you able to get locked in with the cars that are behind you, and and, and push through, um, and, and try and generate a run? You you kind of know how this is going to play out. You know how many laps are left. You know when the race is going to end. You know how everyone is going to handle the start. So you have the entire playbook in front of you. Each driver is trying to think of that scenario right now as we have extra laps. Yeah, for Andres Perez right now running third, do you try to get behind Gustine and push him so hard he's not able to 
to to lay off the throttle a little bit to let Jake in. Yeah, I think honestly, as as much as we kind of laughed about it and, and smiled at, at, at uh, Andy J's strategy, in this situation is the best strategy. You just drive through the car in front of you and, and, and keep as much momentum as possible and, and, and hope that it that it disrupts, you know, the the, the choreography of, of this teammate restart. Yeah, they did it perfectly the last time. If they, they did. If they can execute that again like they did, then it may be tough to do anything about them getting together. Now, once you go down the backstretch, all bets are off. Maybe you can get together with some other guys and, and make a run on them. And there might be some more importance behind behind the finish of this race and this teammate restart. And we talk about going for the win, but Venturini is going for a, their 100th win in the Arkham Menard series. And that's that's a big milestone mm -hmm. for the team. And I, I'm sure they're pretty poised to, to, to make that happen between these two cars. Let's check in with Heather real quick. And catching up now with the crew chief of the two for Andres Perez, Danny Johnson. Danny, I hear your spotter up there working through a plan with your driver. So what are we going to see him do when we go green? Uh, we're just going to try to see what we can see what we can make happen here. Um, go for the win. That's what we all come here to do. Um, one of the biggest races of the year for us. So we'll uh, get after it here and see if everything falls out the way it needs to be. Good luck. Thank you. I think there's some nerves. Totally. A big moment. Three of the top six drivers right now have never raced here before. Jake Finch, the leader, is one of them. Andres Perez in fourth. And Armani Williams in sixth in the 13. So as the drivers come out of turn four, they will take the green flag and the white flag together. This is ARCA overtime. One more lap to decide it. One more. One lap shootout. We've been here a long time. You all have been watching and listening for a long time. Here it is. Everything on the line. Who will win at Daytona? There they go side by side, the teammates. They head into turn one. Jake Finch, Gus Dean. They weren't able to do what we expected as far as the teammate restart. It's, it's delayed a lot further, and Gustine has the advantage now as the, as the second-place car, and Andres Perez has a, has a big run here. He's trying to get clear. Gustine's getting way too far out in front, and we're going to have a run from the outside as well. He's going to have a run. Now it seizes up a little bit. A little side grab on Andres Perez. It's going to depend on which lane gets the bigger oh, push. Oh, no. Jake Finch Jake goes Finch. around and dominated race wrecking all over the place at the front of the field that will end this race Andres Perez huge hit on top of another car Gustine in the 55 will unofficially be the winner of this race winning the 100th race for Venturini Motorsports his third career win in the Arkham and Art Series celebrations all around his first win since 2018 and what a moment for Venturini Motorsports we talked about the 100th win they had been looking forward to it last year they kick off the season by getting it with Gustine we've been talking about him all night drove a heck of a race undoubtedly Austin there were not team orders or or else they didn't they didn't work very well yeah, I mean, they, they had two bullets in the chamber there at the end of the race, and whether they decided they just wanted to cover both lanes or or however that however that went down uh, b between the team, obviously uh, they, they had two of the best cars in the race, and really unfortunate for, for Jake. I think he drove a really great race, was put in a lot of uh, unique positions that you would only really get in, in in super speedway racing, whether if that's leading the pack, listening to your spotter, you know, the teammate restart, saving fuel, um, executed it all really well, and unfortunately doesn't, uh, doesn't have a finish to show for it, but... Uh, Obviously, a great result for Gustine and the 55 team. Let's see what happened here on the final lap. Just a lot of pushes, and there was a lot of momentum coming back to that third row. And uh, that outside lane started it. And, uh, yeah, just a lot of pushing and shoving. Yeah, I think Andy J was in the back of Jake, and I think Andy J had uh, had Lewis in the back of him as well. And then yeah, they all it just was almost simultaneous. The, the inside and the outside got to the second row at the same time and just kind of fishtailed each other in into both lanes. Watch Perez in that two car up against the outside wall. He's actually climbing over climbing another car here. And he like stays mounted on top That's of the Andy, 73 Andy car. That's Andy Jay's car. 
that Armani Williams? It is. It is. The 13. What an impact for Jake Finch. But 66 laps tonight, only to go straight into the wall on the final lap. Here's another look. Yeah, Jake's just going down the straightaway, and they start pushing and shoving there. And should be good on onboard view here from uh, from Perez coming up as he's he's obviously the car that's he's on top of Andy Jankowiak's yeah. car. Could be a wild ride. So he's getting the side draft, thinks he has a chance to, to win this race, and then lots of pushing and shoving. 20 gets turned into the fence, and then two car goes for a run. Oh, my goodness. Amazing pictures. There he is. Fought so hard, Gus Dean drove a great race, brings it home for his grandfather, who he just lost his best friend a couple of weeks ago, said he's going to race and win for him, and he does it. Gets that checkered flag, nothing but smiles, and Amanda Busick is there. Gus, we know you were racing for a lot here this weekend, especially in, mem in memory of your grandfather. This milestone win becomes the 100th for Venturini Motorsports, and you are now a Daytona winner. How sweet does that sound? You know what? I started racing when I was four years old at a tiny little dirt track in South Georgia. It's been a whole lot of miles, a whole lot of work, and a whole lot of people behind me. My granddad came to every race I ever ran, and every single one of them, he would tell me to get what I can. Even at the end when I would call him on the phone. Well, tonight, we got what we could, and it might not be the 500, it might not be the biggest race, but it is the biggest coliseum, and for a small town kid from Bluffton, South Carolina, this is everything. Gus, you got everything that you can out of this tonight. One more question for you. <laughs> I want to go back to that restart real quick. Talk about the communication between you and Jake and what the orders were there. Yeah, we, uh, you know, Venerini cars always work really well together. We always try to do the teammate restarts. Um, we did the restart before that one. I love Jake. He's a great kid. He's a hell of a race car driver. He's got a big, bright future ahead of him. I just didn't have it in me to do the teammate restart there with one to go. I had a little bit of a special reason for tonight, and I came here with one mission. Congratulations to Gus Dean. Wow, what an interview. His emotion, very poignant. He yeah. knew exactly he, his mission tonight. He was motivated by his granddaddy. Yeah, and that was his dad that he was hugging there too. I think it's a great, another great example that this race has provided for what Daytona means. I mean, you come to this weekend and you think of the Daytona 500, but for these guys, I mean, this this really is everything. And, and, and this racetrack means so much to so many people. That's why we have race fans here watching this race at almost two in the morning. Um, it, it's to see moments like this and, and obviously victories like this. And um, obviously Dean was able to really put it on the line and, 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 and get that win because that meant more than anything to him. And Heather is caught up with our second place finisher. Thomas Annunziata brings it home second in his ARCA debut. Thomas, could you have dreamed of a better finish with all the craziness we saw during that race? Yeah, first would be nice. Yeah. But um, uh, no, after start being in the rear most of the time and, and then making a, a pit stop mistake on my part and having to start dead last, uh, we just, I just kept my foot in it. I had to learn how to modulate the, the runs here and there, but we got back to the front, and everyone at Jeff McClure and, and Nitro Motorsports did an amazing job this weekend. The spotter up top was amazing. They coached me throughout the entire way. So I've never done this before, so uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to get the result that we got. And like I said, I wish we got uh, one spot higher. I would have liked to put this car in victory lane 34 years after the, the movie, Days of Thunder, um, but uh, maybe next year. Great job tonight. Thank you. It's great seeing new faces. That's what this series is really all about. Let's take a look at our 
top 10 in the Suchi Fast Track 200. What a nice recovery for Christian Rose with a top five finish. Yeah, even Jason Kitzmiller, he got involved in that wreck on, on lap one or you know lap two, whatever that big one was. And with the damaged race car, still, still able to make it happen with Amber Balkan in the top 10. Andy J, unfortunately, was was running up at the front of the field there, had a, had a car mounted on top of him, and still gets a 10th a, a place finish. Uh, pretty, pretty incredible. How about one of our international drivers, Jill Lunster, getting a top 10 finish? Five different countries represented in this race, and we're just getting things heated up. We've got Saturday and Sunday to come. Cup Series practice tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Xfinity Series qualifying after that at 11.30. Race day kicks things off at 4 p.m. Before the race, it's the Xfinity Series race at 5 p.m. Eastern. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed the action tonight. This double header. What a race it was from the drop of the green flag. All the action all the way to the end. Daytona always delivers. And we hope you enjoyed it. For Phil Parsons, Austin Sindrick, Heather DeBoe, Amanda Busick, and all of us here at Fox Sports. I'm Jamie Little. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow on Fox Sports. Good night, everybody.